You are now entering Maximum Driftcast, the only drifting podcast hosted by a Spanish soccer mom, a 30-year-old silver-haired fox going on 60, and finally, a 200-pound bowl of spaghetti with chimichanga arms. The champions, the champions, we are the champions. Il champion, il champion. Benvenuto, benvenuto a another uh, episodio del Maximo de Riff Casto. Uh, uh, Cori? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mamma mia, soap appear, daddy got a diarrhea. Oh, uh, si. Sí. Yeah. I've been uh, working on that one for about three weeks now. <laughs> so. Nailed it. I've been wait. I've been kind of waiting for this episode for quite some time because uh, we've seen our next guest kind of floating around on the internet for quite some time and uh, he hasn't really made his way over to the United States. But I figured like, dude, we should all know a little bit Italian, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. just, just a little bit. Other than Italian sausage and uh, Italian penne noodle with the marinara <laughs> saucy. Ay, ay, uh, mommy. Uh, more, uh, Mario Bros. Um, also, speaking of Italian, our Italian co-host Sammy Stramboni is not with us. And it's uh, he's pro- he he choked in a bowl of pasta last night. Yep. Even yeah. though. Even though Sam is here in Arizona, in case you don't know, Paco. oh yeah, I mean, well, th- he had some some birthday duties to attend. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Birthday duties. Birthday mm. duties. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, so Sam won't be here with us today, but we do have myself, Corey, and Paco, and then we also have big balls on the ones and twos. Hit us with a couple reggae horns or something. <laughs> yep, so there's big balls. He's he's is that. What does that translate to in uh, in English? Hello, how are you today? Whoa. Nice. How was that? Oh, and then uh, we also have Paco uh, R2B2 um, <laughs> back in the factory today. But uh, so, what is it? What Paco, what's been going on? Well, um, lots of things going on. One of the things is I noticed uh, you did a throwback on your on your vlog. That yeah. was cool, dude. Dude, so. Tell okay. us a little bit about it. All right, so uh, this was 2013 ish, if I can recall correctly. Um, this was 2013-ish. I, I shot a video on a GoPro, and it was like a Hero 3, I believe. And this is when uh, myself, uh, Chris Forsberg, Jonathan Castro, Dylan Hughes, the MA Motorsports guys, we did a demo in Mexico City, and that's when we were there for like 10 days. And that was, I was even telling you that when I first went out to Mexico. Uh, I let Paco know because that's where he's from. Uh, but anyways, I was going through my external hard drive yeah. to move all my new video stuff over to it. And I was like, oh, Mexico trips. So and I was like, cool, let me pull it up. And then there's like, dude, hours of footage that I recorded off a handheld GoPro back. And I'm like, screw this new vlog. I should dig <laughs> through this and make something fun out of it. And uh, yeah, it was just a cool throwback to uh, seeing uh, what we did out there and other trips that happened since then. Because we went yep. to Panama and did other things together. But yeah, it was super cool. Super fun trip with the guys. And uh, look forward to do it again, hopefully. Where, where, where can people find your, your vlog? Oh, you just it's on Corey House, right? It's no big deal. Oh, it's no I'll big deal. link it it's somewhere. No, no I'll link it somewhere. The thing is like... <laughs> I want people to organically find it and make their way over to it and see if uh, see if it's something that they're interested in. I don't want to try to push it or sell it too hard. I just want people to see it if they're interested and they'll find it on their own if they want to find it. Um, the other thing too, Paco. Uh oh. Uh, I finally got uh, my second two Jay Z. What? Today. I mean, you 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 barely have one. Yep. That's that is not running yet. You already have a second one. I like things not running, and I'm going to try to keep it that way <laughs> as long as I possibly can. The other thing, too, was, uh, you know, I'm used to a V8, so I needed, I had one bank, right? So yep. uh, I, had, I have a you need inline six. Banks. I need two banks, you and then I need two, two heads. Yep, I need to uh, pancake the, the sausage party do together. You have, do you have a, a two, uh, 4JZ? That's a V12. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. Well, I, I, that seems like where the, the drifting society is going is V12s and turbochargers and superchargers. And I think we should, Corey, we should just like shoot for the 2,000 horsepower for 2018. Yeah, I'm going to run NHRA in it first. I'm going to run top fuel um, with a 4JZ. And then I may get back into drifting once I can figure out how to uh, get rolling correctly and getting the right launch off the light. But, uh, yeah, so that was kind of exciting. Uh, I never had more than one motor. Like, I, going back to this whole 2JZ thing, V8, everybody, I still get kind of quite a few questions on why I made the jump on it. And honestly, I'll give you guys a heads up. I, I picked up another motor for literally what I would buy, like, a good set of heads for an LS for. You wow. know what I mean? And so it's like, wait, I can get a full-built motor. And I already have pistons and rods for the, nether, for the new Jay-Z. But it's like, dude. I am literally saving so much more money going this Jay Z route than doing the whole LS thing. 
It's okay. crazy. I didn't think. I thought it was the opposite. I thought, oh, V8, you could just throw it in, turn it in, and go. And it's like, wait a second. This Jay Z stuff has been easy, easy to access to get the parts, right? I haven't had to wait terribly long to get anything. And I'm talking, I got crank rods, pistons, keeping it three liter, like talking about the Kelford valve springs that came all the way from New Zealand. I got them within four days. Damn. Everybody's like, getting these parts, they're hard to source, they're hard to get. It's getting easier now. Like getting all this imported Jay Z stuff, super easy. And I'm super stoked. On being able to uh, finally have a backup motor, so I don't run into what I ran into last year. But yeah. Anyways, that's what I did today, Paco. Oh. Sorry for the rant. <laughs> no, that's good. That's no rant. That's good. Good. Good to hear. And and I'm. I'm uh, it's funny that you mentioned two JZs, man. Oh, what happened? Oh well, I mean, uh, if somebody saw you know in my little video series that I've been working on recently, I'm also have I also have a two JZ project, Corey. Uh oh. Yeah, I might actually... I might Why are we doing this? I might borrow your 2JC. You have two. Why are we doing this? Why not? Right? <laughs> so what are you doing? So um, I got a C3 Corvette. This is a 1982. It's the last of the C3s. Yep. And C3 POs. Yeah, it's a, okay. it's a C3 PO uh, Corvette. And it's pretty much already all stripped and bare. Okay. <clears throat> And it has no engine. It has no, no uh, interior. Okay, so it's already stripped. Nice. It's Keep going. Strip. And it has no, uh, well, so it has no no power plant. And the power plant that's going on it, two JZ. And wow. I, I already, I already got like a lot of, like a lot of people were like, well, like, what are you doing a two J and like Corvette's like, well, first of all, first the, of all, the first uh, engine that came in Corvettes was an inline six. Okay. So Corvettes have a story with inline sixes. Okay. So I'm kind of trying to to bring back that you know the the inline six with an engine that is Japanese because the idea of the car is to make it look uh, kind of like JDM, like a like a Supra. Like my, my idea is like a mix between between Matfield and and Rad Dan. Okay. So you're gonna be Rad Matt. Uh. Super Paco. Super Paco. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we'll see. I mean, I, th this is a project that I, I've been thinking for a while. Oh, thank Brian spoiling it already. Oh, spoiler alert. Okay, I guess I'm not the first one to do this. So you know what? Forget about it. Go back um, to that. Go back to it. Let's look at it real quick. Look out, actually. So for you guys that are listening on the, on the uh, podcast, we're actually looking at a 2JZ and how it fits into a C3 Corvette. And it looks like it fits extremely well. Holy shiza. Yeah, I'm not sure that if that's Photoshop or not, but it could be real. I know a, a few people have done two JCs on Corvettes already, and uh, but they're mostly for drag racing, right? And they pop wheelies and everything. I can't wait for you to pop a wheelie. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't pop wheelies, but but it'll, well, uh, probably be popping tires. But yep. yeah, so like the idea is to build a drift car that is like pretty much like FD spec, you know, okay. no radio, no yep. nothing, just clean. Um, and see if I can do it. Uh, as I saw your post floating around the internet today, and I stalk you pretty aggressively on social media. Oh, you know, thanks, I got I got to make sure you and Sam stay in, stay in track and don't get in trouble by the Instagram police. But I saw a lot of people saying, "Why are you doing that and not continually finishing the van?" Oh well, that's the thing. Like I am still doing the van, right? So, so oh, anyways, you want to try to get this done before SEMA? Yeah. When do you want to get the van done? Way before, like see, like the thing with the van, it it only it only needs the so, the front soft frame, okay, on, yep. so I can mount the engine. After that, it's just wiring, okay. You know, like but then the drive shaft, transmission. Well, I'm, well, I have the transmission, and everything. But how you got to make the uh, shift the mechanism? Link, yeah, the, it, 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 well, it, the van already had shift linkage, like by cables, right? So I'm pretty much gonna use the same cable linkage mechanism. It still needs to be adapted, but it's it's a lot closer from being done. Than the Corvette, so I'm not abandoning the van, and I mean, if if you haven't seen, I, I started doing like a little like a little show on YouTube about Roofless Garage, which you are the author of the name of oh, such yay. garage, and hey. um, uh, one of the things that what I'm doing is build is working on my project mm -hmm. instead of having shops working on on the projects yep. because this is stuff that I that I think I can do and might as well just put it on on video so people can criticize me. All right, so. Quick fact check. Okay. You need the van done by the end of the year. You need the Corvette done no, by the, the end the of the year. No, the van should be done uh, on, no later than So summer. you need the van done by the end of the year. You need the Corvette done by the end of the year. You need the Dodge van done by the end of the year. You need the V8 swapped Aztec by the, done by the end of the year. Don't need, but I'm... 
So let's, those are the see. four things we're working on with Paco. So those are four things that we need done. Um, Paco is actually going to be hiring a full-time technician to live in his house, <laughs> as well as working on all his cars. So um, if you guys are looking for any type of working on old cars, uh, old uh, what are, they're all prototypes. All the cars the owner prototypes. Um, it's pretty you much. Can, <laughs> you can direct message Paco, ask him for a body kit, and ask him to to work on on your hot rod. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I can pay with uh, I got drinks. Idea. Uh-oh. Yeah. We should actually just finally try to talk to somebody that knows something about cool cars because I don't know how much you know about it, and I've seen your car collection as I pull up to your studio that's not at your house. Yep, nope. Um, but we, we definitely need to get some research on that. Maybe we can convert one of your cars to a Ferrari. Ah, that would be so sweet. It's like I've never heard anybody putting a Ferrari engine on something else. Right, yeah. Like, it probably wasn't a big hit on the internet or anything. Yeah, and, nah. Definitely, but, definitely not. And if I could turn any one of your cars into a Ferrari, it would probably be... Oh, God, which one would I turn into? The pro- I wouldn't Definitely do the, the Aztec. Yeah, I wouldn't do the Aztec. I'd probably do the Aztec because when people hear me prowling through the mountains, <laughs> I want them to know I got a V12 under the hood getting that little 4 4 by 4 up the up the up the mountain. That's that's my goal. Uh but anyways guys, um what else is going on? You know, it's it's picking up speed. Drifting's only what 60 days or just under 60 days away Formula Drift Long Beach. We had some news announced today that the Jerry Yang Racing GTR has been picked up by a new driver that isn't Robbie Nishida, which is kind of a, a shocker, which Robbie kind of announced his uh retirement earlier this year but uh let me go here i'm pulling up stats on the driver i'm hopefully i pronounce his name correctly kazuya taguchi tanaguchi no because taguchi taguchi kazuya taguchi well anyways (laughs) he ran in formula drift uh japan which he's had one podium multiple top eights uh, top 16s and top 30s. So he was a pretty decent competitor over there. It's kind of interesting to see what he would do out. Uh, we have we have a here, Japanese here in uh, person back in the in the in the Formula Drift, which is it will be interesting. Right. I wonder. He's probably like he's probably like like uh, uh, Daigo or uh, what was his name um, uh, with the S15, the blue S15. Uh, uh, Yokoi. Yokoi. Or they're like probably don't speak a lot of English and they're like mysterious. Oh, mysterious! Yeah, yeah. I, I I hope it's it's, it's going to work out to be a good season. I know they were working out the bugs in that car later later on in the season where Robbie was kind of finishing up. So we'll kind of see where they develop the chassis to now. But yeah, you know, all these foreigners coming over and trying to 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 compete. In I know the there's, there's just, people coming from all over the world. I mean, the like, Irish taking over now. You have another Japanese driver coming over. I just don't know what we're going to do, Paco. Maybe we should just go. Um, I think uh, so. So okay, so we are the spaghetti show, right? We, I would love if we could have somebody who knows a thing or two about spaghetti. We should call, dude. We should just screw the drift cast. We need pasta cast right pasta now. Pasta cast. So let's switch into pat- pasta cast. And because of that, we have a special guest directly from uh, Pastaville, Pastaville, it- Italy, Italia. Yeah. And this is oh, oh, there he is right there, Ryan oh. Turk. <laughs> yeah, hey, Ryan Turk. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> no. no. Buongiorno. Oh, buongiorno. Oh, buongiorno. That's my favorite pizza. That's my favorite pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's not delivery, Corey. It's yeah. bonjour. Do you guys have a delivery pizza, like a Pizza Hut out there in it- Italy? or We do. No. Um, we do, but we are like uh, very picky on, on the, how the pizza arrives, you know? So it's it's not so common because the, the, the boy is always in a very... In a, in a rush, and all the mozzarella goes on the side oh of, the, of the box. Do just they, just do the they, way he said mozzarella yeah, makes me mm, hungry. Mo- mozzarella, <laughs> the way. Mozzarella. Do La they, pizza. Ah, mamma mia. <laughs> yeah. Que cosa. <laughs> do, do, do the guys deliver on Vespas? Yes, on Vespas. Yes, oh man. God, yeah. the on the new Vespas, though, you know. Dude. They don't have the, the gear anymore on the knob, you know. Oh it's just the automatic like a scooter. The little pedals? I, I, yeah, they don't have the little pedals anymore, you know. We're, it's we're for do, old school boys. We're in the wrong business, Paco. I know, dude. We, sh- we should be living in Italy the high life, driving around Vespas, eating pizza, and delivering it like a Ninja Turtle. I want, I want a Vespa GTS 300. Do you? Have you ever seen the, Federico? You know those? Yeah, I know those. I know those. It's it's and a little actually hard they're getting popular again now. Ah, oh, see, they're they're fast. A tiny little thing that can keep up with with like six hundreds. <laughs> they look they look hilarious. Like like they lean on the corners and everything. 
So we're here with yeah. Who are we talking let to? Let me. I want to hold on. Let oh. me try to pronounce his name, and you could tell. Oof. You could tell me if I'm doing wrong. Federico Sharifo. Yeah. Was that pretty good, good? man? Oh my that's god. Good, good yeah. job, Corey. I've, I've been working Nailed on my it. Italian uh, leading up to the show. I was telling Paco. Um, the first thing that I said actually on the show is "Mamma mia, sopa pia, daddy got a diarrhea." <laughs> <laughs> is, oh my god. Is that, Ita- oh god. Is that Italian? I think I can teach you a lot of new terms you can <laughs> use from when I'm coming. You know. <laughs> I bet it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of bad words. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna grow yes. so much chest hair. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm gonna be the hairiest man on grid. I can't wait. Oh, You're oh, already kind oh, of the yeah. hairiest man on grid. I'm, I'm working on next, it next to Danny George. I'm working on it, dude. I can't wait. Federico, I'm what funny. what time is it over there? Right now it's uh, five twenty four a.m. Oh my god. Well, That's good so morning. Early. Is yeah. it good morning or good night to you right now? Have you well, been up all night or are you just waking up? No, I just I just woke up actually. Uh, I go to sleep uh, very early every day uh, because I wake up very early. So you just uh, um, you just made me anticipate my usual wake up about half an hour, an hour or so. So it's not that bad. Wow, not bad. So uh, what, what's your bed schedule? What time you go to bed? Eight, nine? Like yeah, between oh between God. nine and ten thirty. You know, <laughs> like, aren't you guys supposed to be partying all boy. night? Like, isn't the Italian MO? You guys party all night, sleep all day. We. <laughs> We do, we do. <laughs> I I haven't got the time and the chance to do that actually. Right not now. yet, not yet. We're gonna save that hopefully when you come here this year. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward for that. Sounds very good. Sounds very good. So uh, you have been, uh, man. You've been making waves kind of in the drifting industry for quite some time, and now you've always like been popping up here in the U.S. drifting scene every now and then. Like we'll see you pop up in an FRS. We see you pop up in a Red Bull car. We'll see you pop up and then. You vanish, super mysterious, right? Yeah. What is your story? Yeah, I, what do you do? What have you done? Like, what's your drifting career? What is? Where did you start? So I start. Uh, I start in 2004 as uh, like the first Italian drifter because I I dreamed of becoming a rally driver in my life, but at the beginning, uh, my curriculum, you know, my palmarès was not that. Uh, uh, rich of uh, success or mm-hmm. you know results, so I didn't have the chance to find support for the rally. And in 2003, 2004, I discovered uh, drifting, uh, watching some YouTube videos from uh, uh, my my Japanese uh, mates. Okay, so okay. I just completely fell in love with that because I just used to drive sideways from when I'm 15 years old without knowing what I was doing. Okay, right. just my personal pleasure. So I started doing that. To, between 2005 and 2008, I traveled Italy and Europe, um, achieving good results and a lot of experience. Then I meet uh, my Japanese uh, spiritual guide, okay, okay. and uh, team manager. It's Sleepy. It's uh, Hiroki Furuze. He's a, a Team Orange manager, and he was involved in the 1GP organization that in 2008 invited me to uh, Japan to attend a, uh, the first World Drift Summit conference that they mm-hmm. organized. And we were like 14, 15 countries. And uh, I managed to be the first non-Japanese to get a D1GP license to race in Japan in 2009. Nice. So I raced in D1GP 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 uh, with a Team Orange. That is my Japanese family. I, you know, I uh, love... Uh, the culture and I, and I love uh, their strict way. Okay, because yeah. I've been through. I've been through like. Uh, I mean, Karate Kid ain't nobody compared to me. You know? <laughs> the Karate Kid it, it, nothing compared to the things I've walks been through. Walks on, walks off, dude. Yeah, Federico, the Karate Ninja walk, Drift walk, Warrior. Walk with my feet and hands, you know, I have to do it. Not only with the hands. So. <laughs> oh, four legs. Yeah. Walks on. <laughs> yes, yes, oh, yes. That's yes. that's what actually. That's what you say. Bonasera, bonasera. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so that has been an amazing experience then. Um, and I have achieved uh, very nice results also with the Team Orange winning in 2012, the first uh, international uh, cup in Tokyo. Okay. And then I've been hired by Red Bull China with my mate James Tang in these years. Uh, that's a five years uh, experience we had. We built up uh, Red Bull China together. It was just the beginning. Now, in 2015, you know, the cars really developed a lot and uh, we were not ready to build a new car for me in right. D1. one So um, I got like uh, in standby. Then 
I I met um, I met Mr. Fu that it's Sean through another friend of mine that is Andrea. He's uh, one of the fastest GT drivers uh, right now on the business. It's Andrea Caldarelli, and they had already a a goal, and Sean had this dream of his of uh, creating a professional drifting team, and uh, he already this crazy bad boy already bought this 599 and gave me just put a big challenge on the table you know and he told me if you want to take it you know uh, it's here and I could not say no you know chances these kind of chances in life just come once yeah so, dude like last time somebody gave uh, offered me a Ferrari I couldn't say no either like come, how many Ferraris you've been offered Corey <laughs> let me count yeah, I, I could. Uh, yeah, no, and I, no. I lost count at zero, yeah. so I haven't, uh, <laughs> haven't, haven't made that far. So, okay, you, you started drifting two thousand four. Uh, obviously, you yeah. ran with a, quite a few different organizations through your drifting career. Yeah. But uh, what type of cars have you been drifting through those, you know, ten, twelve years? Um, mainly, I've been driving a Subaru. Okay. So I, I start with a GDB uh, RWD in two thousand five, and then I drive. I drive it until 2012. Mm -hmm. Then I pass on Evo 9. I'm talking about Japan. Okay. Um, in, what engine in package? China, what engine in China, packages? I, I drove anything that you can think of, uh, except S15s. Uh, it's like a 2J 2J world in China, in right. Zhuhai. Okay. So uh, anything anything that breathes with four wheels with a 2J for me is okay. You know, I'm not too picky on cars. They just have to stay running until the end of the weekend. This right. is my goal. So see, like here's a here's a, a little bit of a an issue that comes with reliability, and uh, yeah. it, it's kind of like known that Ferraris, being such a fine uh, machine, they also yeah. tend to be a little bit delicate when it comes to extreme abuse. Yeah. And funny thing is, like after I mean I don't know if you some people have ever you know, seen that FRS with a Ferrari engine. Oh yeah. Super silly. Man, that, super that silly. Really cracked. Crack the internet. I mean, yes, yeah, of course. I mean, Ryan, my, my, yeah, uh, GT eighty six. Uh, yeah. So then that's the thing is, oh, yes, sorry. Yeah. yeah. No. So I was going to say is like before we get too deep into the Ferraris, I want to know like what have has led you up to this point to start making these bigger jumps. Obviously, you you have this FRS that we see quite a bit. What is the yeah. story behind that car, and where has the competition been? And well, uh, the that's the FRS, the yellow FRS right. is a challenge. Because um, we don't have so much experience in building proper uh, Japanese highly tuned cars in Italy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So that was a bit of a challenge, a personal challenge of mine. Okay. And uh, that car is built because I want to be a bit more um, often in, in Europe uh, on events and uh, races. Okay. So we built a, a competitive uh, drift car to attend European events and to also showcase what the workshop can do. Okay. Okay. So that's the purpose of, um, the name of that car is a GGR. Okay. Because we got two FRS, we got a black road legal one. It's called the GG one. Okay. And then we got uh, GGR. That is the, I always give a name to these damn cars. Okay. Oh, for sure. So just, to, it's just always, to make you <laughs> like Paco understand. has one. It's called the Biblio Azteca. The Biblio Azteca. He has one that is named <laughs> the, uh, dolphin. the Dolphin. <laughs> we, the Dolphin. The Lunch. Yeah, he he has uh he has more of a traditional American name behind Ooh. each each uh, vehicle right. that inspires him. But I, his I collection's <laughs> a little bit different than yours. I'd say it's just it's, mine's more exclusive. <laughs> it's just super yeah, rare. There I don't know go. if you it ever is. heard of the it brand is. Pontiac. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's known as a Pontiac. Yeah, Pontiac. Pont La Pontiac. La Pontiac. <laughs> ah, ma che cosa. But Viva l'America. Ah, <laughs> there you go. So, okay, so you went through D1. How, how, did you yeah. get, how did you end up doing in D1, and, and what was your end goal? Obviously, you, you've done much. You know, a lot of us American drifters are like, dude, I'd love to run like a D1 event or, a, or even a street yeah. legal, and now you've yeah. done that. So then yeah. what do you do from there? Well, from there, from there, you you just continue working hard um, because still a lot, a lot to achieve. I mean, a lot, a lot to achieve. I haven't, um, I haven't achieved the results in uh, the main rounds that I was looking for mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons. I had a very good result in Ibizu, uh, doing a, a P1 in qualify in Ibizu. I mean, it's like uh, 
a dream, you know, doing right. P1 in in a qualify, an official round in Ibiza. Then we had some car issue that time. Um, after that, you just keep your head down and work hard. I mean, because I, I don't think I don't think I still achieved uh, what I want. Uh -huh. I I achieved a lot of good results. Uh, also, winning um, some spot in very important events with uh, the best drivers. Uh, in the world yet. I haven't met, I haven't battled all the best drivers in the world. I don't feel I'm I'm the best driver in the world, but I want to become the best and one of the best for right. sure, working hard for that. So that's what you do after. So I mean, what you was, don't stop. Yeah, so what was it like? Obviously, Team Orange has this name that resonates around the world and, you know, everybody goes out to Ebisu and yeah. wants to drive with Team Orange and drive with Kumo Kubo and Tanaka and all yeah. those guys. Uh, what is it like to drive over there and train with those guys? And how has that affected your driving to where you're at well, now? Well, um, let's, let's start from somewhere. Yeah. We're, uh, working and, and driving with and for them is an uh, amazing experience. I mean, amazing experience. Also, because when you talk with Akuma, you're talking with one of the four or five inventors of this sport, you know? Right. I mean, the, the, one of the guys that set the rules, you know, yeah. uh, so it's already very charming, you know, and he has uh, a karma that, I mean, uh, Goku ain't nobody compared to Kuma, you know, so right. it's very, it's very um, amazing experience. And at the same time, if you are accepted by them, you know, if they really open the doors um, of their of their private uh, lifestyle and the working style, it's very difficult for non-Japanese to cope with their uh, strict style. It's very um, demanding, uh, brain-wise, you know, it's right. very demanding. My, my technique um, improved drastically from when I went there. At the same time, the um, Japanese say they compress you like a spring, you know? They compress you like a spring and see how much you can hold it, hold it, hold it. And then they just like release you. OK, right. it's in the compression process that you don't have to give up. You know, everybody gives up in the compression process because they, you know, like you achieve a good result. You you do a, an amazing lap. You know, you hear in the radio, the guy, you know, you're like, I killed everybody. And you hear in the radio like, not bad, not bad. <laughs> well, you're like, OK, OK, so. <laughs> Um, or you 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 destroy the guy in a very uh, elegant and technical way, you know, and you get out in the paddock and they just look at you like, yeah, you just did your job, you know, that's wow. it. So they're very strict, okay? But at the same time, uh, they give you some very uh, special life lessons that I take with me forever, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, they they for sure have a big part of what I am today. And uh, I, I take it with me, you know, it's, right. it's been a, an amazing experience. And yeah, so that's about, that's no, that's, about it. No, that's, that's kind of cool because once again, a lot of us <clears throat> that haven't been over there yet, it's once again, that's kind of the, a cool point in, in drifting for a lot of the drivers is go experience that and go see it firsthand. Yeah. And uh, not many people have, and obviously you've been in a little bit more involved with the the Team Orange community than most, obviously, driving with them. And I believe, what, you own a, a Team Orange car, actually. Yes, yes. I've been, uh, I've been delighted from the big boss after winning uh, in 2012 the international match, you know. Right. Um, he, he made me this uh, amazing surprise that I would like to uh, express it in the best way. So we, we've been working seven years together. And uh, the Subaru, the orange Subaru that I've been racing with, and it's Kumakubo-san 2006 D1 GP champion car. Okay. Ooh, okay. So after seven years working, and I we win the 2012 international match in Tokyo, he wins the 2012 D1 GP season uh, in the same weekend. So it was a huge party. Um, yeah, actually, I, I get still emotion about that moment. We always have a, a dinner a night dinner uh end of season party dinner okay so he starts talking and um he starts talking in japanese and i see like people start like kind of i don't know crying and looking at me i said oh my god what's going on and so 
he said um, as a show of of their appreciation for my respect, my loyalty, and all the hard work I've been doing. You know, uh, the car could not uh, stay with somebody better than me, and nobody could love and keep the car better than what I do. So he gave me a huge key, okay? An auto came with this huge wrapped up key, okay? And then I just unwrapped the the key and I started like crying. It was oh. everybody crying and it was so emotional. Wow. And so we just put the car in, in the container and she's here uh, on holiday. She's uh, <laughs> she's on my windows on holiday, you know? She's over here, yeah. Wow, so you <laughs> you they gifted you that car as being a significant member of the team worn for seven yes. years. Yes, yes. Wow, dude. It's a, a Forza Naranja. No. Forza Naranja. <laughs> what is that? Paco, what? Dude, you're just it, trilingual it's like, now. Like, a, you know, Team Orange. Uh, is, is Orange in Italian? Is Arancio. A, Arancio. The Forza Arancio. Nice. Forza Arancio. There you go. Dude, that's, that's so cool, man. Like, it's like, I don't, I never thought that, like, Team Orange would have, like, like an app. Like, like an honorary owner is that, is that what that would be Corey? like an honorary member i uh, yeah or, i don't know how much more you can get involved than being gifted a car i would say that's you're a pretty big part yeah. of pretty big part of it at that point like well yes. you know the feeling you just gave a 700 dollar ls 400 to brian <laughs> hey same thing i mean you know uh, i was very emotional giving that, that i remember that dude, car, it's probably the same thing as getting a d1 gp car from kumo I, I would say it's probably it's the same thing for me <laughs> for me it was the same thing but paco hasn't taught you anything the action, <laughs> the action that counts it's not the value of the object it's the action that counts you know oh, that's absolutely a, that's, absolutely that's a very yeah. nice thing to say yeah no that's so, so see there you go so now you guys have that that uniqueness yeah. of being able to hand out cars paco so so, so paco uh, so Bri Federico's getting ferraris brian's getting lss you yeah, haven't gave me Lexus. anything yet um, <laughs> come fuck what Wait, do you got well i mean don't spoil the, the, the oh there's oh uh, we got God, i want something wrapped up don't in spoil that. it yet i mean I'll, it'll eventually get something oh uh, no i don't need anything no, i'm no, fine. I kidding i ain't so, giving, giving you shit <laughs> you've dude so you've driven all these crazy cars you've done all these crazy things you just bragged about which is awesome that made all of us jealous <laughs> and now what are you doing with this ferrari we see it everywhere what are you doing with this beautiful yellow stallion I'm I am uh, developing and doing a decent setup to make you have fun in Long Beach, you know, because I don't want to come down uh, halfway ready. So now we're ready. The car is uh, feeling amazing, and I'm still working hard on it because I want to I want her to move uh, in even a more natural way. Now she's moving very natural. We had um, some. Uh, grip uh, issues because she's got so much torque and then I had some issues with the clutch uh, mm -hmm. that couldn't cope uh, with uh, with it right and I'm very now I'm very uh, pleased and uh, I'm very how do you say I'm, I'm charging I'm charging my batteries because I've been working for six 16 15 16 months non-stop 15 hours a day you know right. uh, after her so it's not been easy it's not been easy because you know you say ah oh, let's let's get a ferrari you know whatever whatever supercar you take i mean you cannot improve easily you know right. what a car like that can be already right you know you can you just have to be careful to not make it worse also, because they already study all the flows, all all the you know uh, air flows and uh, water flows and you know everything. It's already very very uh, detailed by them, you know, right. from from the stock. So we faced some issues and uh, some also some drama was there. And last year I was supposed to I was supposed to come, but we were not we were not ready. Uh, from my point of view, uh, for such a big experience, you uh -huh. know, and it it didn't um, it, it it wouldn't it wouldn't give us the correct uh, how how do you say it wouldn't give us the correct um, the good start recognition. yeah recognition we oh. we need you right. know after all that hard job and then we had other little issues with the tire support because we're running twenty inch. 
And actually, we're still working hard on that. And there was to be supposed to be a company involved that then didn't come anymore. So right. that how it went last year, and it's a bit, you know, a shame because a, a season a season blew away. You know. Oh yeah, yeah no. But, I was supposed but to anyway, drive last year. Too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Corey knows the feeling. Yeah, I did. I was supposed to drive last year. I didn't do yeah, shit if I, if I'm not mistaken, I thought I saw you walking around Long Beach last year. Is that correct? Yes, yes absolutely. Absolutely. I was in Long Beach also because, um, yeah, I was, supposed to, I was supposed to be there competing. It was the minimum I could do right. uh, to, to be there. And then I, I really love the environment, you know. Well, yeah. for, for me... I, I don't care about the, the backstage stuff, you know, today, like there is backstage stuff everywhere, but I really, from outside and from what I can feel in the paddock, I really want to be part of it, you know, so right. I'm getting, I'm getting ready, getting ready on that. Um, well, uh, funny thing that you touch uh, about the tires, is there uh, anything you can tell us? Like, is there any possible tire that's going to be working with you now or still working on it? Well, we saw your Westlake I, post, so we were like, wait a second. Is Westlake yeah. doing something in Formula Drift? But then we're like, wait, there's no official release yet yeah. of Westlake. So what, yeah. what have you figured out a tire situation? So I needed, I needed uh, urgently a good performing tire to test. Right. Okay. And 20-inch wheel. Uh, not so many. Westlake showed up for uh, they're keen to support the European programs. Yep. Okay, and of course I gave them the message to think about joining FD. You know, right? Um, other brands, yes, I'm working on other brands. I don't want to tell you much right now, just to not uh, create some misunderstandings yet. Okay, right. but for sure I'm I'm working on it. Unfortunately, 20 inch wheels uh, is not so easy to find a competitive compound. You know, and that's yeah. the same issue that Daigo ran into when he first came over here yes. in the GTR because he ran a 20 inch. 22. Uh, did he? Was, I, was it a 20? I thought he had 22. It was yeah, a 20 like inch a huge, plus wheel, yeah. but he yes, had a 20, key. 20 or 21 something, yeah. But he had huge. to work with Achilles to come up with a specific tire. It was almost and like, a, like a special order, right? Right, for that particular um, yeah. wheel, wheel package. Yeah, so we're working, we're working on that and uh, we will. We will soon, for sure, have an answer because uh, because we need we need an answer, you know. Oh, for so, sure, it's the drifter's life right there. We need tires. No, well, the other thing <laughs> that you picked up in that short conversation that we just had about the Ferrari, you know, that's that's one thing to really take in consideration because he's not starting with the Nissan 240SX where you put toe arm, suspension arms on the car and it completely changes the way the car drives. Yeah. You're starting with a car that is already so well engineered. That would yes. be easy to take it backwards by doing one thing wrong. You know what I mean? Well, we like, did, we did take it backwards the first uh, two, three months of testing. I mean, that's why uh, it, it's been very cha chaotic, you know? Right. Yeah. So what have you been doing as far as making components for the car? Because I don't th – once again, I'm not really familiar with Ferraris. I don't have one yet. But uh, what is the aftermarket Soon. world like or the suspension aftermarket world? Or, so what do you do? Like, I – well, there is a – Hollin suspension. I mean, no, the coilovers. Okay, it's a uh, Hollins, and they oh, okay, they already did this. But all the suspension arms and everything is completely custom made. Okay, from from a, um, Yeah, from a WRC and Super Rallycross uh, company making uh, Super Rallycross and WRC cars. So the Fiorella is like a. Um, like a GT GT3 car, you know the um, that spec, yeah. you know the uh, the endurance uh, cars. So she's like a proper GT car style, yeah. okay? And uh, that's been that's been pretty chaotic and fucking expensive, crazy, crazy. <laughs> so, Dude, I, as soon as he said Olens, I'm like. Uh, I yeah. mean, it's a Ferrari, Corey. You, you're I, not gonna, I, you're not gonna put yeah, like uh, you, you, Ching Chong uh, <laughs> coilovers. The, the funny thing is that every time I call a supplier, you know, and I'm talking about the Toyota, it has a price. Okay, right. The same job. So like, we're talking about welding, we're talking about painting, we're talking about anything like this. Yeah. The same job on the Ferrari, it's a twenty percent more. And I said, why? <laughs> you have to weld. I mean, welding is welding, <laughs> uh, but man. È una Ferrari. È una Ferrari. I said, yes, I understand. But, I mean, you have to, you know. Ferrari Mazzarella. Yeah. È una bella macchina. È 
una bella macchina, maximum drift cast. <laughs> there it is. That's what New they intro. say. That's what they Sorry, say intro. over there. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, that's the thing that I when I saw you first starting the car, I was like, man, he's gonna have some hurdles to jump through because there is really no support for that car. Yes, and I don't yes. know what else you're gonna change on it. And like even going back to the drive chain, you said he had issues with the clutch. It's like. I don't know who would manufacture a clutch that would be able to support 1,200 horsepower or 1,000 horsepower for not, that thing. Not so many. No, no, not so many. Not so many. So like, what's, some, what's some hurdles that you ran into with the car as you were developing it? Well, um, water flow, for sure. Okay. Uh, because she she's like very also very long. We have radiators in the back. Okay. okay. And also the um, where I position the water pipes. It didn't help the water to get around easily, okay. okay? And so that was the first issue. And then we had to uh, get the correct uh, intercoolers for the airflow of the of the superchargers. So that was uh, another issue. Then we had some fuel issues, you know, because uh, the the fuel um, the rail the fuel rail was not correct. Okay. You know, and made uh, made the fuel uh, spin in the wrong way. You don't know the fuck I went through, guys. You don't know. <laughs> really, it's shocking. It's shocking. Well, it's even so, wanting but, wanting to upgrade injectors on a Ferrari. Like uh, I could see that. I, well, I did that. I did that, and uh, she like. I do – well, I know I talk about liters, centimeters, so uh, I, I accept I, – I don't know how to say it in gallons yet or how to make the calculation. I, 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 I can two, convert. 40, 40, 45 liters of fuel, okay? Uh-huh. I, I do like a 10 minutes run, not more. That's uh, like 120 gallons. No, <laughs> no, um, no, I think no it's the opposite. Uh, yes. Huh? I mean one – one liter, one gallon, it's probably it's for, for three liters something. Three point eight liters. There you go. So it's the opposite, so, like uh, like one third of that, uh, like twelve gallons per minute. Twelve. No. Yeah, I mean not per minute, twelve shocker. gallons per. It's shocking. Per ten minutes. Yeah. So I there had to remake also the minute, custom roughly. the custom made the fuel rail. Okay, we had to test two or three of them, and then. Um, a big support I had actually, and I wasn't expecting this, is from uh, Dallara company. They are they're they making uh, F1 chassis and uh, the um, the Cadillac that won the 24 Hours of Le Mans. They made nice. it. Nice. Okay, and they're here like at one kilometer from my workshop, and also uh, Ferrari, the main factory, um, stepped in um, with uh, some tech technicians coming here, giving me a hand. Wow. So I found a lot of uh, support, moral support, and this is very important for me. It was very – it was a key part of it. Also, I feel a lot of, I feel a lot of support because many, many people here know my personal story. You know, I, I haven't uh, – nobody, nobody gave me nothing for free in all these years. You know, I'm earning everything step by step. I'm uh -huh. very proud of this. So I'm, I'm finding a lot of support because I feel I'm a real guy. Right. Everything is true, okay? And I ain't no um, silence or secret support, but I make it look like, you know, I'm doing all this by myself. And so I'm very charged, very charged. So just just want to confirm. Uh, well, we're, we're gonna uh, dismiss a myth right here. So n everybody in Italy, in Italy, they don't have Ferraris, right? Is no. That, oh, <laughs> so no. I told you, no. Corey. Yeah, I, I thought they Actually, ever did. You have more Ferraris around uh, some major cities in USA oh, than here, Italy. You Scottsdale. Know? <laughs> yeah, probably have more. Here in Scottsdale, Arizona, we have one of the highest concentrations of Ferraris in the world. There you go. Really, really, really. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I see more Ferraris when I travel around the world than in Italy. Also, because with the big uh, crisis we had four or five years ago in Italy, yep. um, you can't travel with whatever car you want around the road. You know, you you have to be careful because then you have to give a lot of uh, explanations. You know yeah. how you have this car. Got it. Yeah. Huh. That's. That's that's pretty interesting. No, no, so I want to get on the other side of things, right? So uh -oh. you you've driven obviously like a Subaru, you've driven yep. uh, the FRS, you've driven a handful of cars over the years. Chaser, Suarez, Altezza, yeah, whatever. Okay, so this is this is the side that I want to get from you. Okay, so yeah. obviously you're out 
and you're still obviously hustling and trying to get sponsors and looking for companies to get on board, tire companies, yeah. uh, fuel companies. You're looking at getting some endorsement. How much yeah. different is selling your program, owning a Ferrari as part of your program versus trying to say, hey, I'm running a Subaru this year. Come be a part of my team. Have you noticed a difference on how people... It's funny. It's funny. Uh, your question Your question is interesting. I, why? Because so you think... You think like you're running a, a program with a Subaru, you know, and um, you give that impression that you are working hard with a good product, okay, but you didn't do nothing shocking, duper amazing, you know, okay, but you did something good, so you 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 sell yourself right. uh, with a Subaru, okay, and you achieve. Also, it was time ago. I had uh, different uh, results in my bag, you know, I didn't have the results I have today. So it right. was different asking for sponsors, but let me, let me answer your question. So having a Subaru and having a Ferrari, you know, what's the different reaction that when they see you with a damn Ferrari, they damn think, you no need sponsors for God's sake. Oh my God. That's funny. <laughs> that's, that's actually that is crazy. interesting. They're like, why do you need more money? Dude, I mean, Rico, yeah. that is a good point. Balling uh, with a crazy so budget. I said, I said, guys, guys, this took me, you know, this took me like 12 years to put together people, companies, supports, karma, all this, <laughs> all this stuff, you know, 12 damn years. I didn't wake up in the morning and say, let's do a 599, guys. Yeah, go with a Hollinger double supercharger. Let's go, let's go. Oh, no, 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 no. Pronto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pam, pam. No, no pam pam style. <laughs> Fucking no pam pam style. So, so um, it's never... been interesting. Wow. At the same time, then you hook up some companies that are like, whoa, this guy must need like money because oh, right. he spends a lot of money. So he must need money to run the season. So it's a uh, it's a double uh, face. Uh, it's a like a double double edged sword. Of, um, not easy. Not yeah. easy even finding sponsors with a Ferrari for what I told you. Because seriously, you give the impression um, you had the money to do it, you know. Right. At the same time, at the same time, um, I want to give the impression that I did the investment. I found the, the, the budget to do this investment. But now we need companies that believe in this investment and can give support to make it continue, to make it run you know right well and that's the thing too is like uh I've, I've obviously spent a lot of time on the internet reading message boards and you know we get reached out a lot by people as far as you know people coming in yeah. and leaving the series and you know a lot of people are like well what does he expect to get out of this year other than having probably one of those coolest cars on grid and i think it's yeah. well beyond just having a cool car i think having a cool car oh, yeah. does solidify a package but it's also the uniqueness of what else you're bringing with the team that seals the complete deal. It's not just, hey, guys, I have a cool car. We're going to do well. It's like there's so much more no, no. beyond that. You can't just sell a cool car anymore in Formula Drift. Yes. Yes. It's very, very nice. I appreciate so much what, what you're saying. Um, of course, there is like a lot of uh, um, thought, different thoughts. And we know, I mean, we are surrounded by haters, you know, and all this stuff. And for sure, even until you don't get to know me or to talk to me, you can have many opinions, you know, on myself, um, on my on my character. And I unfortunately, I don't care that much about what people think in the, in the bad way. OK, because I I have no time to think about that. At the same time, I know there is also a lot of interest. OK. I am not coming down just to be a poser, okay? Right. Uh, it, it would be too much of a show-off saying, oh, I'm going to come down and, you know, kill everybody, you know? At the same time, yeah, of course, the goal is to achieve very good results, but the main goal is to make the crowd go crazy, is to make Gerald scream, is to make the judges happy, and to bring something, um, to bring a to add a value to already the coolness that it is FD, okay? Right. So that's my my purpose of coming down, not just with a cool car. People are thinking, you know, maybe I'm, because it's a Ferrari, I read some stuff, you know, I'm not going to, like, drive it hard, all this stuff. I got three complete body kits for it, you know. I can <laughs> shove it off the wall. Well, no see, like, th that's why people are not giving you money, because you keep saying that you already have all these things. <laughs> no, you have to say, I still need a body kit. And, you know, I... I <laughs> Not saying I, I can relate, but I know 
the t- it took 12 years to say he did this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's 12 years of sometimes working for free or sometimes working for nothing yes. and doing these trips yes. out of your own pocket sometimes to afford yes. this. Because here's the thing that I think about all the time. It's like, man, if I would have just got a real job 12 years ago when I first started racing, I could probably buy all these things on my own. But of I went course. down a different path to saying, you know what? I want to spend all day doing this, but I know if I spend all day doing this, I'm probably going to have to sacrifice not making money for a little bit. And then you exactly. finally get to a point Man, to where it's like, so well. yes, yes. So now it's paying back after a 12 years of investment. Now, if you put a time, like a cost on your hour that you put into this, right? So you did 12 years to finally get to this point to drift the 599. You did 15 hours yeah. a day for 12 years straight. Let's say your hourly rate's 20 bucks an hour. You know, yeah, that's the, do yeah. do the math. So you probably have invested more time than what that car cost. Absolutely, absolutely. Do not do not talk about um, private life, and right. let's not go and talk about that. You know, because you are always your mind is always there. You know, I don't know how other pros do it. You know, I I I don't even want to know, except you know the ones that I have a very good relationship. I don't know how the other pros do it. But man, I'm seven on seven on this, right. seven on seven. And of course, another thing that I'd really, really like to do uh, is uh, drift school. I love teaching. Uh-huh. I love, love teaching. You know, I, I have a drift school from long time and I teach also in Ibizu uh, for um, non-Japanese uh, drifters and also for beginners, Japanese drifters when I'm there. Uh, Kuma gives me this uh, amazing opportunity. Okay. So yeah, it's... Um, it's 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 not easy. I, I really I really uh, think that many of the newcomers and all this stuff think think and they they only think on what they see on right. socials, you know. Right. But they don't know about the backstage stuff. I'm sure the big boys uh, that you know very well are working their their ass off, you know, every day. Right. I'm oh, yeah. sure. The, well, that's the that, that's that's another good point because what. Every, you know, what we post on social media and yourself, and I can probably mention a, a, quite a few other drifter names, they kind of only show the moments of like, hey, look oh, at yeah. my cool car. It doesn't, oh, they yeah. don't post like, you know, breaking the car 12 times before it's getting that. They only post nope. the beautiful things out of the, the 30 days it took to get the car put together. Because honestly, if you guys saw every day in the life of going to the shop, work on this, you know, you probably get bored exactly. out of your mind. But it's only showcasing like the final end product. And that's what people are seeing. And so oh, yes. uh, a lot of this times, and all the drifters now, it's like even we go on social media and talk to Forsberg and Turk, it's like those dudes yeah. are shipping those motors out. They're getting built. The cars are getting wrapped now. Uh, all these dudes are prepping to get ready, and it's it, off-season. There's really no off-season. There's we talked no about this before. There's no off-season in yeah. this professional cool. drifting or in drifting in general. No. At the last no round, fuck, cars coming apart. You know what yeah. I mean? It's getting ready and rebuilt. It's true. It's true. Absolutely. Um, I, I agree. I agree with that. It's, um, it's very, it's very hard job. You know, it's a very hard job. Any professional, uh, level highest level in that sector is very, very difficult, but it's, it's interesting and it's important that also, uh, the, your, uh, your followers and, and who is listening right now understands this, you know, it's, it's not just a matter of, uh, finding companies and sponsors and it's done. No, 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 no. Yeah. So here's, so here, here's a, just a quick question for you. This is from yeah. uh, Garrett Callens. He asked, uh, why does he want to run formula drift USA? That's it. Because I, I have it in my, um, how, how do you call it? Bucket Your list. Checklist. Yep. Bucket list. Yep. Bucket list. Yeah. And you guys for sure, uh, have uh, an amazing way to promote anything you guys do, okay? El America. Ah. Hey. El America. Okay, so it's very <laughs> interesting, um, and I want to be part of it. Uh-huh. I feel I I have something to bring to you guys, uh, but I want you guys to feel it when I arrive. Okay, okay. I don't want to talk much about this, but I'm sure I'm I'm ready to bring something. Why? Because it looks cool. Uh, the drivers are pushing hard. Okay. Yep. And I really want to be part of it. That's why, you know, right. that's why. So here's, here's another follow-up question to that. This is from uh, Paul Velichikhanov. Hopefully I said that right. 
Um, have you had any Velo experience trial. with FD style judging? Not yet, but hmm. it's pretty logic for me. Okay. I'm I'm a, I'm a judge also. Yep. And uh, actually, I, I'm I've been the judge of one of the most challenging uh, championships in the world, the RDS. Okay? okay. And they're very high level technique drivers, the Russians, but also the characters of them. You know, so they're very strong. So after you know you do some qualify, you must you know be ready to give. Uh, explanations that's not a problem because i always have a clear mind on that mm -hmm. but it, judging is not easy and i respect so much judges because it's such a huge responsibility you know and it, it's not easy at all i for me it's pretty lo logic the judging style um i come i come from an experiences that some things uh in japan are a little bit different OK, then what I see here, uh, some things that are OK for the uh, FD judges in Japan wouldn't be and yeah. vice versa. You know, yeah. so one one ball in the middle. Uh, I'm ready anyway to adapt uh, as much as I can to the task of the judges yeah. and also to showcase what I have learned and what I'm learning and what I'm training in, in these years from my Japanese uh, school, you know. Right. So, uh, you know, how, how long have you been following FD? Have you been following FD as soon as you got into drifting or is this something you picked up later on? Uh, something I picked up later on, not that much late. I mean, I've been following it from 2010, 2010. You know, okay. 2011. Okay. So I've been very, very concentrated in all that was uh, the training side, you know, mm -hmm. more than D1 or FD. I was on a very strict uh, training program as a driver and as a person, you know, as an right. athlete. So I, I didn't have that much time to uh, take my head up uh, in, in the last uh, seven, eight years. That's why it kind of looked like I was uh, sometimes I disappear, then I do a great comeback and then I disappear right. and do a great comeback. No, it's just that I, I don't have uh, the... Um, the freshness in my mind when I'm so concentrated on, on a goal to do good updates on the socials, you know, and to have a good uh, media promotion. I'm a bit uh, still uh, weak on that. And also uh, Italy is not a country like USA can be that helps you out with a media promotion. You know, the, mm -hmm. also the, the, the boys in USA, the drivers, the big boys in USA, I think they, they're great uh, showmanship. They're great drivers. Plus, they have uh, the the fortune to be in USA, you know, and right. you guys have the culture of pushing something new, of uh, promoting, of all this stuff. So this has been a bit um, my weak point. Okay. Do you uh, do you have your uh, transportation logistics figured out? Do you have a rig and all that stuff that you're working on? So, so I I got um, I'm gonna make you laugh now. You know, we, <laughs> got, we bought we bought a amazing beautiful trailer. Okay. okay? And so we waited for the trailer. It's so cool. It's so nice. Very good. So the trailer arrives, okay, in L.A. Okay. And then they send me some photos of the trailer, okay? And guess what? Uh-oh. Fiorella doesn't fit in for <laughs> no. five centimeters. <laughs> she has a fat butt. So now we're doing a little modification. He, the, the, the car can go inside. But uh, there is the wheel covers, right. you know, the inside wheel covers that we need to do something about that. Um, actually, I'm searching for a tow truck because I got this gooseneck. I'm searching for a tow truck, and uh, I'm thinking, thinking about, thinking about it. Um, we're organizing. We're organizing ourselves. <laughs> also, I had a. I had some other drivers giving me ideas. I know that some drivers put the their cars on a uh on a truck like all together and they go around right. so i'm i'm organizing myself i think i think uh this first season uh will be uh will be a study right. you know a study season i mean yeah. i see other drivers that just uh arrive there and achieve a very good result i i'm aiming on that but for me uh it's more like an experience and studying your, your style uh, timings, uh, what happens in the paddock, you know, and yeah. also having the experience to travel around USA, 
uh, for sure traveling is traveling but right i have to experience this you know I, I i don't know yet what's what's waiting yeah um yeah obviously you've you've been seeing the the evolution of formula drift since 2010 and how i'd say oh, yeah. the past four years have probably been the quickest quickest growing of the sport yeah. just between uh vehicle <clears throat> development cars and I, I don't know you obviously you probably follow a lot of the drivers too is like you look what people yeah. are building now you know matt field's oh, yeah. building a very cool Full carbon HGK semi Corvette Vortex supercharged yeah. nitrous probably gonna be around 12 1300 horsepower. You have the wow. HGK BMW Eurofighter. It's a beast These cars well. in the past two three years and not you know excluding Daigo's SC300, yeah, um, which a... really changed the game mm -hmm. uh, back yeah. then. It wasn't S3? Sorry, 430. Sorry, 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 430. Excuse me. Yeah, uh, yeah. These cars now are just so on a different level that uh, it's it's getting to a point where it's. You know, you need the best of the best equipment. You can't come out here and think you can perform on something that's even just Absolutely. an inch, uh, inch apart of that. Uh, and, at the, and at the same time, it's something different. And that's what people want, you know. Dude, and th I think that's the cool thing about this sport, and especially here in the U.S., is that yeah. you, you there's so many wide varieties of car and, the cars and competition that makes it unique. And Absolutely. Tuning styles, you know, it gives a chance to the tuners to express themselves and manufacturers. Yes, absolutely. Even, even think back to when, like, anti-lag started being huge, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? There's always been 2Js. Even Doug came out of 2J. Didn't really have anti-lag on it, but then you have... Uh, the PSI dude starting putting put, anti lag on the sequential so, shifters, and, and it's just like, dude, the sport is just getting more ways to express yourself. It is uh, than I ever. Say we're going, we're going, you know, more power. Then we need yep. grip. Then you give power, you lose grip. Then you need grip. Then then you lose power. Then you need grip. Then you lose power. I mean, it's like it's we're a crazy chasing balance. each other like that, round and round. You know. Yeah, and I think that's the other thing about the sport is the com comparing it to a lot of other forms of motorsports, even like the Ferrari Challenge is. A lot of the parts are homologated. The rules are very strict. You can't change yes. much. Considering FD is still a new sport, the rules are still fairly wide open. And I oh, think yes. that you're always going to be learning something in the sport because there's always something to change. It's not like you're running the same per you know same thing that the person next to you is. It's you can change anything. I'm For example, you can go to the extremes of like I don't like the way this engine's performing, so I'm going to go V8 next week. You know what I mean? You can make these dramatic jumps that you can't do in a lot of these other competing series. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. why there's always so much to change. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be the first Ferrari in Formula Drift, which is cool. How did the Ferrari respond to you saying, hey, man, this is what I want to do? Like, how, how are they um, looking at coming so, into the sport? Because, and the only reason I say that is because BMW very, didn't like it very uh, much. Yeah, yeah, they... They were actually very um, silent in the beginning and watching things from from the window and not saying much. And then there has been a moment that they some rumors told like some rumors arrived to me like, oh, maybe they don't like it. You know, you should ask permission, all this <laughs> stuff. Then I started uh, having some connections okay, with them, like step by step through F1 mechanics that I know already. Yep. And officially, when when Fiorella was ready to to attend like four or five uh, decent laps in front of the crowd, okay, the FCA, it's a Fiat Chrysler Automobile, mm -hmm. okay, it's the company ahead of uh, Ferrari, Fiat, Maserati, all these brands, Abarth, and they invited me. Uh, to do uh, a demo run in front of all the big bosses and all this. So that was the official deal, okay? Right. So it's like being approved, okay, uh, non-officially, non but officially by them. You got, wow. so you got the blessing by the, from the Pope. Yep. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Lord yes. Enzo. Uh, that's uh, El Papa Lorenzo uh, the Ferrari. Papi Chulo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, no, the thing is, like, I mean, Ferrari is kind of known for being very particular when it comes to people modifying their cars. I mean, not yeah. to, not too long ago, they sent uh, Dead Mouse, the DJ Dead Mouse. Right. They sent him a cease and desist just because he put uh, vinyl livery on his Ferrari. But the the other issue to man, that too man, is he. Man, I mean, uh, I didn't I didn't do Fiorella pink with uh, <laughs> bunny ears and uh, furry the furry staring. Do you understand? Sure, but 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 yeah. it's his Ferrari. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, man. yeah, 
Uh, it's true. It's true. Um, and obviously he did it. It was. It, it's a joke. I mean, because what he he put a uh, it was a, the the nylon cat. Neon but the cat. other thing that they didn't like they called is the Ferrari. They, they he they Ferrari did not like. He removed the badges inside the car and put a nylon. He cat put a little cat instead, instead a prancing of the, a prancing cat. That's the, that's the worst thing he could have done for us. <laughs> you know. Oh, I, they're, they're, I don't know what it is, but that just they're very meticulous about their yeah. products as yeah. being the. Best I mean, I, I understand, but at the same time, you know, like it's mine. It's like, I know, for example, like Ferrari, you can just like go and buy an Enzo, if, right. even if you have the money. You are you have to have at least two uh, Ferraris that you've bought from them previously, and that's that's the taste. That's the taste uh, that you can agree or not, but that's yeah. the taste that they managed to create you know right, that's yeah. the magic that uh and the magic and maybe all, a little bit a, a snobby snobby rich boy style okay yeah but <laughs> it's a ferrari it's a ferrari right. i mean like what else what what do you think Corey, when you see a ferrari like that guy must be a hairstylist uh, Guys, you know you know i i never owned a ferrari and uh -huh. Fiorella isn't my property, okay? Uh, she's my, um, how do you say? She's my katana, okay? Oh. Oh, she's, she's something like that for yeah. me, but she's not my own Ferrari. I, right. I cannot afford a Ferrari, and probably I will never afford a Ferrari in my life, for my personal <laughs> life. But, yeah. hope not. Hope I can afford <laughs> it. But, but um, you... Uh, wow. You must understand that it's an amazing and a, a fascinating world, the Ferrari world, you know. Really, really, uh, once I got Fiorella, I started uh, knowledging myself on Ferrari company and all this stuff. It's, it's a world. It's oh, yeah. not like a company, you know. They really created a, an amazing... Um, I don't know what term I can it's, I can use. It's a but... whole. It's like a lifestyle. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Exactly. It's such a simple term. Bravo. Yeah. It's such. It's like a lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. They created a lifestyle that has really definite rules, and it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Have uh, you Have you been to Ferrari World in Dubai? Not yet. No, not yet. So hold on, I want to go back a little bit. Uh oh. Because no, no, no. It's, it's it's a great point. I'm glad you said that. I'm I'm actually glad you said that. Uh, you don't own it outright, and that the program you put together allowed you to get the Ferrari to use for competition. Yeah. Because there's a big misconception floating around about you. Everybody thinks that you're just this rich Italian mobster that Jesus, uh, has Corey. tons of money <laughs> and just, you know what? I'm just a rich, I, I'm just, I just want to clear the air and get it out there the because message. it's interesting that send you say that. Message. Send the message. I still have to pay the electric, electric bill this month. I'm a bit late. Okay. <laughs> Waiting for some payments to arrive. I, 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 we're, we're, I, we're starting dude. a patron right now. We're gonna get okay. money for no. for Federico's okay. uh, I, I, electricity bill. Oh, no, I love, I love, I love where the direction. Uh, no. <laughs> He's panhandling <laughs> with his hat. No. no, I really love the direction of where this is going because yeah. this might be a, a great story because you have some it's dude. Important. It's important. I imagine this. You know, you you are now talking about something that for me is very important, man. Because I've been working my head off. You know. Dude, and, and I'm not shy. I'm not shy, and I'm not embarrassed to say that I've been through the worst shit people can imagine to be where I am today. Okay. Yeah. And my my parents, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, my mom is not here anymore right now. But I have uh -huh. beautiful thoughts about her. My dad was completely, completely against what I'm doing, and he never gave me a damn penny for what I'm doing. Okay. I so do. I hope. I hope uh, people will get to know my story more. <sighs> no, I ain't no rich guy, but this doesn't have. This is not an excuse or an, or an explanation. Okay, I'm a I'm a simple uh, province boy. You know, I, I've been I, I've born in Milano, but I've been raised in the Milano Bronx uh, uh, style. Okay, bam, bambino, Milano bambino. bambino. Era un bambino cattivo. I ah. was a bad little boy. <laughs> no, okay? it's a. Uh... This this the story is really interesting to me. Yeah, because it, it, well, here Federico, let me give I you think an example. You can relate. Well, let with me this, let me. Corey. I just want to give a story to Federico and, and have him elaborate on that because sure. there's this big misconception in drifting here in the United yeah. States that it's 
impossible to go pro. It's so expensive to go so pro. It's so it's expensive to build drift cars. It's so expensive. No. And it prevents... People train. People must train. Guys, go training and go training with a good instructor or with good rules. It's not... It's not about the powerful car, you know, it's about technique. Really, the drifting is about technique. Then, then you have to be uh, a professional guy in the car. When you get down of the car, that m- makes you start the road to be a professional guy, you know. Right. Yep. Well, that's and that's that's the 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 uh, this disconnect here in the United States. And I don't know what it is in certain areas or even Italy or, or neighboring countries, but it's uh, it's 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 the perception is it's making it very difficult to do, but to hear your story that you were just this motivated dude with motorsports, wanted to go drifting out of his own pocket, no money from your parents, busted no. your ass every single day, got to ride with team orange. Cause you made the investment to go out there, created relationships. This is a prime example that you have a dude here that worked extremely hard and he's you driving. Can't make it. You can't make yes. it. You can't make it. Like, like you can make it from a real story. You understand? Yeah. I mean, you can make it. You can hope that somebody is watching you on the grandstand, and maybe when you finish your free practice or your qualify, will come to your boot and say something. It happens. It does happen, guys. Don't stop dreaming. Don't stop. That's hoping. awesome. I'm, I'm glad yeah. you said that, man. My God, like, really? it, it just seals the the point that you know what it. If you want it, if you want to go pro, if you want to go, you know, be the best grassroots or the best pro driver out there, come up with the game yeah. plan and train and practice yes. and sell yourself yes. and sell the program. Practice, guys. It's not about the, 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 the lock. It's not about the power. It's not about the sequential. It's not about the suspension setup. It's about training, 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 you know, training. Then you can drive any shit car and make a good performance with it, yep. you know, because – Many, many drivers focus on just the car. Of course, the car must perform, okay? But before, you need to raise your technique. There's no, nothing else to do. Nothing else. Now, how important has it been for you to also uh, uh, create yourself as a, as a, like a sellable person, like somebody that, that uh, companies want to work with? Somebody, because I, I, like, uh, uh, skilled Not people, easy. there's a lot, but skilled people who are also good at communicating, good at talking, good at making relationships, uh, people who are not like prima donnas, you know, it's probably yeah. pretty, pretty hard. So on, on that aspect, what, what have you done? And what can you tell the, the people who wants to, also wants to reach this level? I, I, I learned a lot. I wasn't good at that because, you know, the first times, the first, like 10 years ago, when I stepped in the company, you know, I just stepped in, get to the marketing director and said, hey, you have to sponsor me because you don't know who I am. You must sponsor me. And it didn't work that well. <laughs> you, you, you needed a little bit more of a cosa nostra. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Doing, 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 doing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That style. I didn't achieve that much. And... Uh, I I started looking at other pros, okay, when I had the opportunity, just also how they talked when they met some sponsor in the track or how they talked uh, by phone or checking, like, how they answered to these mails, you know, and all this stuff. So learning and learning and learning. And then uh, the best way is always to – Go there in a low-profile way, I think, okay? Mm-hmm. It looks more polite. But at the same time, look at them in the eyes and be sure of what you want. And it's, at the end, a company, you know, a company, there is a person beside deciding, you know, there is a person beside, uh, behind, sorry, there is, the, there is a person behind this company or uh, more than one person that takes the last decision. So... It's not about like, oh, I have to convince the company. No, you have to convince the guy that is sitting uh, on the other side of the desk that what you propose him, it's cool, okay? So it's always about also human relationships, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't um, work out anymore, the fact that you say, oh, the guy is a talent, you know, uh, but he cannot uh, talk that well. Uh, he's a shy guy. No, you must be a complete guy because – well, we see also uh, some big champions or some, you know, very good athletes that, yeah, they they achieve their championship. They achieve what they have to achieve. But then nothing happens, you know, because they don't know how to communicate with people, right. express their feelings, make people express their feelings. So 
uh, luckily, I always um, didn't. I always didn't have a hard time to express my feelings and to drag uh, somebody in a positive way in my drama. Okay, right. so this is what I suggest them to do. Um, you think that then looking at from outside, you think that uh, the uh, an uh, attached front and back bumper are not important you think that a clean car is not important you think that a decent racing suit is not important it's all important it's yep. all important wow. you know because uh, companies are looking at all of this and let's try to stop to give this um impression that the more your car is fucked up and attached with the zip ties the more you are a cool hardcore drifter bullshit that's bullshit okay yeah, yeah. so <laughs> We like need the, to. There's uh, there's uh, a moment for that. There's a there's a time and place for that. Yes, absolutely. But if we're talking about professional world, we're talking about involving a company and asking somebody money. You know, when you pronounce the word money, money is hard to earn. Money is important. You know, so you have to uh, always be very delicate when you're asking money to somebody. And for sure, today. The, another suggestion I can give is that today companies don't give you just money to put a sticker on your car. Okay, they uh, more sure give you money if you offer them uh, some selling their product program, or you have already some customers interested in their products, or you have some kind of I don't know um, plan for pushing their products because many drivers. Uh, many people think that they just go to the company, ask for 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand. Oh, the sticker is this big, this big, this big. That's it. No, no, no. It doesn't work. It doesn't work anymore like that. Yeah. At least for me. It's, okay. It's called it's, uh, return of investment. And, yes. And that's what companies want in return. Like they yes. don't necessarily want you to pay them back in money, but they want to see that you're retroactive, talking about the brand, representing it, making yes. them proud. And, you know, constantly, it, it, it's, it's pretty much, you know, like, like making, I mean, how, if, if somebody gives you $10,000, Corey, wouldn't you just be like so pumped and so happy about this company and just like, we'll be talking about them all the time. Hey, these people have been great. They've been supporting my, my program. My car yeah. is running awesome because of these guys, you know, exactly. so, something broke, but fortunately these guys had my back and it just, First. everybody. Everybody just like, yeah. oh, you know, that's, that must be a good company. I'm, I'm, I will buy from them too. <clears throat> yeah, Absolutely. That's, that's the thing is I don't think, like Federico said, I don't think people are buying products because of the sticker on the car anymore. Exactly. They're buying no. it based off of personal relationship. And like Federico, yes. there may be people that can relate to him or inspired to be at his level yeah. or to drive his cars and they want to be in his shoes. Yeah. So they want to take the similar steps or use similar products to be in the same shoes he is. So if it's running X tire because he's ran it for 20 years and knows that's what it's going to take, then that may yeah. be that way. But it's look at it as kind of like taking a suggestion or referral from your friend, right? Yeah. The car is yeah. not going to give the referral. So driver giving the referral about the experience he just had yes. in the car. Yeah, absolutely. So I think absolutely. that's and that's where what he's saying, yeah. where it's kind of going. I totally agree but, with that. Like the only thing I buy today because I see it on the hood of a car is Tide. Tide because you yeah, eat them. And just eat Tide pods. Mm, they're delicious. Yes. Hey, do you have pe people eating Tide pods in Italy? Mm, not that common. <laughs> not that common. <laughs> you can't order them on pizzas or anything over there. No, no. no. But we we could propose that. You know. Yeah, I, I'd I'd be down to give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just load me up an anchovy Tide pizza. <laughs> yeah. Tide pod pizza. Yeah. Um. So let's do this. Uh. Are you at your off shop right now? Yeah, I am. Uh, would you mind show us those beautiful gold chains? I know Ferrari guys like gold chains. It's all about the and you gold have a chain. couple gold chains behind you. Can you show us those medallions you See, what's, got? What's behind you? Let... Yeah. So let's see here. So that's yeah, give his... us a give us a quick shop tour, and then so, we'll kind of like reiterate that, what we're doing to the. That's his uh, 2005 uh, swimming five Toyo Toyo drifting show uh, second place. This is a 2008 first place. First place, third place, first place, first place, Damn. second, first place. The Michael Phelps okay. of drifting. <laughs> Is it Michael Phelps of drifting? As, well, <laughs> he kind of looks I, like him too. You don't know. You don't know if we were like in three or four drivers per round, you know. So I, it was a like a podium for sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't tell you that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were showing with two guys. If this, if this yeah, was like two guys, you know, two guys, and or I do first or second place, you know, it's those kind of races. <laughs> if if Corey Watson does, he'll somehow he'll manage to yeah, make I'd fourth, qualify thirty third, thirty third every single time. <laughs> then I got, uh, yeah. So I got some of the Red Bull trophies. These nice. are uh, third places. Some China stuff. Okay. We have a this lot of China stuff here too. That's an international um, match in Hong Kong. Okay. This is some more uh, Red Bull uh, China stuff. Do you have a bass flute? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably uh, knows. <laughs> then I take you. I think. Would you like? Would you like to see Fiorella? Oh, oh Fiorella, Mazzarella, ah, yes. Ragazza bella, bella right, macchina. Right. Let's see this uh, Fraller Mazzarella. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go see this thing. Uh-oh. All right, so for you guys that are listening right now, he's walking us down a beautiful staircase in a golden mansion. He has this huge, <laughs> massive shop, this rich Italian guy. And hey, <laughs> I still have. I still have to also pay the rent this month. So oh. okay. <laughs> Start handling it. So, so Patreon, remember, uh, <laughs> dot com slash uh, pay Serifo's rent. Yeah, so Serifo's... Yeah. <laughs> One dollar helps. For you guys adopt, list- adopt the sheriff, guys. <laughs> adopt <laughs> the sheriff. <laughs> I beg the you, Sheriff Sharif. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he just sheriff. gave himself a nickname. <laughs> is, that, is that what you want uh, Jared to call you? The sheriff? Well, I, well Jared... Well, Sherifo is like really means the sheriff, like oh, sheriff, sheriff, the guy with the horse and the star. You know, oh, it's like dude. translated. What a so cowboy! It's really sheriff. You need to come to Arizona, dude. Jared will find, but let's see. So, are All you right. ready? All right, Uh-oh. let's see this thing. Let me see a uh, rolling drum. Look at that <laughs> fat girl right there! Wow, that she's amazing. Can you give <laughs> us a tour of her? Yes, of course. Yeah, give us so, a little. Give us a kind of run through a few up. things. Show us. Talk fire about it. it up. Fire it up. Fire it up. All right, let's yeah. see this. You could fire it up. Uh oh. Would you like me to fire it up? Can, yes. Can you yes, do it? Please. We would Serious. love it. Oh, yeah, yeah please. Okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Right. Let me just tell okay. people uh, All right, this headphone is awareness. Rest, uh, our rest in peace, headphone users. So I have to open here. Okay. Okay. Because otherwise, all this stuff. Yeah, you will die. Passed. Oh, there's a couple oh other collections God. of cars there. It's, it looks just like my garage, Corey. <laughs> it does, but with way cooler cars. With, with the actual cool cars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So I just take you for a quick walk, and then we turn on Fiorella. Oh, si. Fiorella. What does Fiorella so, mean? It's a car. Fiorella is, uh, oh. Fiorella is um, a nickname I gave to her because she is a 599 uh, Fiorano. Okay. Okay. So I say uh, Fiorella from Fiorano, and you have to imagine a beautiful um uh, italian girl working in the fruit shop of the dad with the big boobs and everybody <laughs> would like to have a ride with her okay everybody needs a ride with Ferella. <laughs> right, has- I'll, I'll be right back i'm going to my room Paco, you need to come up with a good name for the with one of your cars you need a italian name for one of your cars so th- this Jeez. is uh this is the frs you guys okay. know yeah yep seen that okay. one quite a bit nice what engine 2j I- yeah 2j 2j and uh, Funatsu-san uh, made uh, the, the engine, and it's the same tuner that made uh, Daigo's car so popular. Oh, okay. nice. Okay. So that's a customer car, a E92. These are, uh, this is another car from Russia, and this is another S15 from Japan, customer cars. These are the Team Orange Skylines awesome. back there. Wow. Okay. That's These are the so cars cool. that uh, my, my teammates use when they come to Italy. Okay. Nice. This is a, this is a GG1, the road legal FRS we got. Okay. Nice. Looks good. Love it. Yes. GG. She's very nice. Then This is my first uh, drift car in 2005. It's my Subaru. Yay. Actually, okay. we have we have our buddy DJ uh, Driftaru on the chat right now. He's been asking like, "Hey, ask him about the 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 double RX for for drifting because he has a double RX drift yeah. car as well." There you are. And here is the D1 car. Nice. Wow. What's the, what do you think is the hardest part about developing the Subaru for drift? Uh, that The engine? It, 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 well, yeah, the engine. But <laughs> it's also to make it strong and reliable, um, strong and reliable, uh, the drive shaft, you know, very easy to, to break. 
Nice. You need to get a good drive shaft in there. And yeah. yeah, these these are my 12 years, part of my 12 years uh, stuff, trophies and stuff. That's like two million dollars right there in trophies. At least, <laughs> yeah. Min- you look what it costs to go to each round. And right. Put a value yeah, on it. Just give them a couple yeah. trophies, and yeah. you'll be good. See, that's the thing is, we look at trophies and not look. You don't look at what you want. You look at how much you spend to earn that yes, trophy. Yes, yes. <laughs> every time, every time I look at a trophy, okay. Every time I look at a trophy, I think of um, how how it was to get there. You know, to get right. to the place and what the weekend was. So. And well, it's actually, like, every every trophy I can remember the weekend like yesterday, you know. Well, well we know like, a thing or two so about we trophies. Have, we have this trophy here, which is a Formula Drift trophy, and everybody was asking us, "Where'd you guys get that Formula Drift trophy from?" Well, yeah, Paco stole this from Forsberg's <laughs> house. So this is one of Forsberg's trophies that, that Paco stole. I was encouraged to do it, by the way. <laughs> so we stole a, one of Forsberg's trophies, and yeah. you look at this trophy, and it's cool. It's carbon fiber. It, what makes this so unique is this trophy I, I can't even tell you what some of these costs some drivers sometimes this might cost 30,000 bucks to get a $300 trophy yeah yes you know true. what I mean like so you look it's at it, it's like man I earned that but it cost me 30,000 20,000 dollars Corey you're but like dreaming of doing that one day huh yeah like look at you yeah, like I'll drink out of it too <laughs> so should, should we turn on Fiorella oh, yes it's yeah, Fiorella Fiorella, right. Fiorella everybody who's listening please all right, hold on. Let's give us a tour real quick on the inside as you hop in. So, we got we got a uh, still the the cockpit is the original uh, five nine nine, okay? Okay. In a carbon, we got this uh, Sparco drifting steering wheel okay. that I've been developing. Okay. We got uh, this handbrake that it's pretty popular in the U.S. This model, and then we have a Hollinger gearbox. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, these seats, I, I will change these seats because I know they're not okay for the rules. Okay. But Halo, for now, right? we got uh, these uh, drifting seats. Right. And let me pop in. Uh oh. All me... right. All right. Let's see this. Here comes I'm the... sure I, I got, I got a, a workshop, a paint workshop neighbor that he will be so happy about what we're doing right now. <laughs> I mean, it's early in the morning. You know, not, what a, it's, it's early in the morning. Yeah, that's, it's early in the morning. That's I mean, how you hey, wake up. We'll be up cooking breakfast in the morning. The yeah. whistles yeah. go whoop. Uh, buongiorno. <laughs> buongiorno. Podcast. <laughs> think, think if I would talk like this if I had this kind of accent. <laughs> well, hey, so... <laughs> America. I'm coming to America now. So, okay. you know, Daga always pretended he didn't speak English. Yeah, you know, there you go. So you could easily get away with it. Okay, so dashboard on. Okay, uh, look at that, nice. What what ECU are you on a Motec? On a Motec, yeah. Okay, nice. Because not many ECUs can uh, run twelve a cylinder. Twelve cylinder. Okay, I've never run it. Actually, I was just talking to Paco. I got two two JZs. I'm gonna pancake together and make a four V12 JZ. four JZ to compete against yeah. Forella. Yeah, it'll be uh, Coreano. It'd be called. Uh, va bene, va bene. We're not scared of your two. Two Jay-Z's put together, okay? <laughs> Ooh. Dang it. All right, I mean. You better watch out so, for my stock FRS. So, here. All right, here we go. Ignition, main. Fuel it's pump. really cold, but you'll make it. We have trust in okay, Fiorella. Fingers crossed. Ready? I can't hear you anymore. That is... God. Brian, can you turn his audio down just a little bit? Mike. All right, so for you guys that are watching, he's giving us a walk around on this 599 Ferrari that's twin supercharged, bright yellow. <laughs> uh, I, Bellissimo. Bellissimo. It's incredible. Italian power. <laughs> I can hear you. Give me one minute. All right. Dude. So, what, last time you cold started your Ferrari, Corey? Yeah. Did it did it sound like that? It didn't start. It didn't start. <laughs> it didn't start. I didn't. I yeah. There's, mama mia, mama mia. Yeah. That's I want to see the engine bay. We're, we're, now, for you guys that are listening, he he's literally sticking us up right up the exhaust right now. It's wow. twin supercharged. Twin supercharged or twin turbo? Twin supercharged. Twin supercharged. Yeah. So hopefully he can show oh. us. 
Well, how was that? Thank wow. you for that. I think you just gave uh, quite a few people. Uh, we call it boners here in America. Uh, <laughs> so you just dished out a handful of boners. Uh, il, il hueso. Il hueso. How, how was the sound? Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, it sounded like a twin supercharged V12 so, <laughs> Ferrari. So, so it's just like the ones we have here. I mean, hey, so in, lot, in my garage and Corey's garage, you know. So a lot of people. Uh, so, so some some Don't people. Don't tease are, me. Don't tease me. Okay. So some people were asking us about the twin superchargers. Can you show us inside the hood and explain what superchargers yeah. you're running? Yeah. Let me. Let me put myself here like this. Okay. 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 Oh, because probably have to remove the whole thing. Did we? Yeah, we're we're no making problem. him do a whole workout right now, early in the morning. Dude, it's it's six o'clock in Italia land. You, Italia. you owe me. You owe me a good beer. In Ooh, LA. Okay. No Ho hopefully, you like what? What's a shitty Corona Mexican light? Beer? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm a good uh, beer drinker. Yeah, also a strong ale. <laughs> uh, we, we, uh, Jared will take care of that. He he's a beer. Uh, I can't imagine something like that. I see Jared has passion of beer. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. So here it comes. For people on the audio only, he's removing all the hood pins. And look at that. Is, is, a, is that hood is made out of paper, apparently? <laughs> it just, he just lifted it with one hand. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, Federico, it, he looks like, he looks like, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He looks like the Italian version of Hulk Hogan. Well, I mean, it's in, yeah, there you go. It's Italian yeah. stallion because he just looks yeah. just like yeah. uh, Sylvester Stallone. Stallion, I like it. The Italian stallion, I like it. Yep, so. there you go. All right, so let's look at this thing. So give me a breakdown on what we're looking at here. Here we go. All so. right, here we go. That's definitely two superchargers. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay, so what superchargers are those? Where do you get those? What Rotrex. are they? They're Rotrex. Rotrex. Okay. I'm running on a 0 0.5 the boost because the engine, we did not uh, compress the engine. Okay. I used to have a double intercooler, but now we got only one intercooler. Seven, seven okay. Okay. That joins together. And yeah, we minimized, we minimized, uh, of course, all the stuff inside. Okay. Jeez. So. Do you have any spare, was... a spare of everything? Sorry? Do you have any, any spares of everything? Yeah, I got, I got spares. Now we're waiting for the suspension stuff. I show you some spare. So he's running about, what, 7.5 pounds of boost, which is a, what, about a half bar of boost. Um, wow. What power are you making out of the thing? What did you get on the dyno? 917 horsepower. That's, that's, that's pretty, enough to get it done. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people... It's, it's enough. It's, it's a heavy enough, car, right? Because I'm afraid more power, apart more power is more issues, but right. uh, you, you just start running after grip, you know? You right. just like uh, start running after grip and other issues. So 900 horsepower, uh, 1,290 kg, kilo. Okay, Paco. Can yeah, you... that's um, uh, the 2,800 pounds. No way. 2,800 pounds. Hey, that car is, is an aluminum uh, aluminum all, uh, unibody, uh, aluminum, right? She, she's all aluminum and um, fiberglass, all. So my question is, how do, you, how do you put a roll cage in an all aluminum body? Is, 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 I don't think the, the roll cage is aluminum, right? No, uh, you have to, you have to uh, weld, weld uh, like a... Um, like a bracket? Exactly, exactly. And, then and, just... uh, and that, the roll cage has been done in Japan. Okay. Is this okay? So there's there's a, a huge speculation because a lot of people a long time ago saw a 599 being built at Daigo's shop, and mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying that this car is the same one. Is that true? True. It is the same one. Wow. See, like a lot of people are saying like that it wasn't. So it is confirmed that's the same car. No, no, it's the same car. Uh, Daigo started. Uh, Daigo started the, the project, uh, and then I finished the project. Wow. I can't tell you more about this because otherwise we stay another hour and a half oh, talking okay. about no, we, I, I, I can't wait for Long Beach because that's <laughs> when we'll get it. So, yes, I confirm. It's the same car. Um, now she, she has a soul. Before she had no soul. She wow. has a soul now. Okay. It's, it's, it's um, well, I mean, you, you gave it a name. So that's yep. probably a big part yeah, of the soul. Of it. It, it, that's one that was born. Yes. Uh, yes. This, I need an Italian name for one of my cars. You, you, you need an Italian name. Why would okay? Would you give Corey? Why do you guys, why do you guys know many Italian terms 
and uh, you know you you get all these Italian influence in your uh, maximum drift cast stuff. Oh yeah, we uh, I'm the spaghetti it, man. This, I know. Yeah, so it's made of a spaghetti. So yep. So that's okay. That's a good start. Like the best. What's the best spaghetti in the world, Corey? Right now. Uh, right now. Well, I'm a big fan of. Uh, I I do like angel hair pasta, and I do love like penne. Awesome. <laughs> right. So, Al dente. Al dente is gonna be my next car name. There you go. I will make you eat. I will make you eat the best the best pasta you ever had. Um, uh, in my in my boot in my you know. In my box, okay. you come yeah. here when we are there. Like a pasta show, yeah. very Italian style. Okay, just boiling the water, putting the pasta, and then we do some carbonara, mm. uh, some bolognese. Uh, we can he do could be saying cow want. balls for all I know. I <laughs> um, dude, Federico, this is awesome, dude. I, I thanks for giving us a quick shop tour. Uh, a lot of yeah. people are chomping at the bit to ask you a few questions, and I want to get a lot of these fan questions answered. Yeah, a because, lot yeah. of questions. Uh, I don't know if you saw the, uh, our Instagram or Facebook at all, but we've got a couple hundred questions. I don't think, obviously, we won't make it through all of wow. them. Yeah, I saw, I saw a few questions, uh, the, the, the positive and intelligent questions I read. The other ones I skipped. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we're going to no, start with the ones are, that you skipped. Those are ones that we <laughs> usually get at. Um, <laughs> uh, so here, I got a question for you. What are, What's some FD drivers that you... Uh, been watching for quite some time and that you kind of look up to or drivers that you would like to compete against uh to compete against everybody right okay okay uh looking looking up to uh i've been so focused on the japanese scene and on the japanese drivers you know that i i am not sure what i could uh answer you okay yep. for sure um technically wise uh, like a driving style and technically wise, I think uh, Forsberg is is uh, very strong. Okay? okay, as an American driver, I'm yep. talking about. Okay, of course, also Frederick is strong, but I it's he's not an American driver. Okay, uh, Vaughn, uh, when when he gets everything sorted, okay, he's very good driver, and I, actually Vaughn is one of the ones that I have a, a more uh, relationship with. Okay, we, okay. we keep in touch uh, nice. rarely, but we keep in touch. So I've got – I'm looking forward to compete against everybody, okay? Uh, I don't want to make it look too much like a show-off uh, answer, okay? Yeah. But um, my Japanese uh, school has been very important and strict, okay? So there isn't like a driver that I'm taking as an example – uh, there is a teams and drivers like packages. I'm taking example of packages I see, but not any specific driving style. Okay, that I see. Hmm. 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 Good, 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 good facts. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Same. Awesome. I mean, I know I'm not saying that I have nothing to learn. I got so much to learn from everybody. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But there is like a driver that I say, oh, I want to become, you know, like. No, 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 no. You don't want to become anybody. You want to become yourself and just better yourself. But, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that it's like, fuck, I would love to go chase that dude down. Yes. I would love, I would love, I would love to have a crazy chase run with Asbo. I would love to have a crazy chase run with Chris. I would love to have a crazy chase run with everybody. I would like to. Uh, express and show my skills and show uh, what's the difference of being a European driver that competed always in yeah. Europe and yeah. achieved such a good level and being a European driver yeah. that went through a very strict and important process like me. Let's right. see yep. what happens. Yep. See, European and Paco's European, so <sighs> that's, that's the difference between you guys. I didn't know if you knew that. But uh, here's a question for you. In uh, Spanish. Um, I have one here yeah, from for it. Alan Union. What is your favorite pump-up music? I was just going to ask that one. What's my favorite pump-up music? Um, some very old-school rap. Oh. Old-school like, rap? Like, really? Let's say like... I love, uh, American, I love American rap. Like hip hop, uh, like like Snoop Doggy Dog, and it's like Snoop, uh, Exhibit, uh, Nate Dog, uh, all this stuff. <laughs> there you go. That's, see that? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, d- 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 all right, here's one from Max Frolic. If you could choose one FD competitor's car to drive instead of yours, who would it be and why? Uh, I would like to jump on Vaughn's Mustang just to do the three wheelie shit, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> pop wheelies and a Mustang. That's the most American it thing you could do. More American. The only thing missing from that is just shooting an AR-15 from yep. the window. You could shoot machine guns <laughs> out here. <laughs> While eating fantastic. a cheeseburger. Let's yes, see. fantastic. Then uh, um, it looks like uh, Asbo's cars are them set well. He's a very, very good driver. Okay, But also the cars are always on spot. And uh, looking cool. Looking cool is also uh, Ryan's FRS, uh, very looking cool uh, as a movement wise and everything. And then, of course, I mean, if uh, if you want to feel maybe the maximum expression today of a drift car is the S15 with the 2J, you know, of, of James. So yep. this um. is this is what I would drive. OK. Unfortunately, you you were a little late for for my dumb announcement before the show when we started the show. But I'm I'm attempting to build a 1982 Corvette with a 2JZ. How much you think I'm going to fail? No, you're not going to fail. I I believe oh, in it. There you go, Paco. You got Raising the sheriff's the approval. That's right, sheriff. I'm, you got I'm, the sheriff's I'm, approval. There you go. Let's do this. Uh, um, <laughs> I have. Okay, I will take a little espresso now. Okay. Oh, oh, there it is. That's the Italian way. Yeah, it's it, it's look, it's tiny. It's a real espresso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. don't get a tall Starbucks. How many? Sp- how many spoons is that? <laughs> Just kidding. It's, <laughs> no, it's this is a no sugar, right? Uh huh. The real no deal. Right, That's look. illegal in the United States. We can't but, have that much yeah, caffeine. B- oh boy. Bottoms up. There you go. The ah. Now you're going to be up until 7 well, p.m. tonight. Yeah, welcome, welcome <laughs> to the show, sir. Even now yeah. uh, we have Federico well, just morning, woke up. Guys. Morning. <laughs> How's it going? Here's a question Good. for you. This is from Jay Seldner Photography. What's your greatest accomplishment in your drifting career? Uh, I think first is the 2012, the D1GP International Match. And then there is the MSC HK International Show uh, in 2013, where there was all the D1 champions and the FD champion. There was Michael Essa. There was uh, Daigo Saito, Kuniaki, everybody. I won that one, uh, beating Daigo in a semifinal with a one more time. The only time I had a head-to-head with Daigo, I raped him in Hong Kong on the <laughs> ring in front of everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. Easy the there, sheriff. cowboy. <laughs> the sheriff's back in town. <laughs> Just throwing down on it. The ninjas, no La- longer. Laying the law. No and there was, uh, there was my good friend, uh, Matt, Matt Johnson. He's an ex-Yokohama man. I don't know if you know him. Okay, okay. Matt. And he was like tapping on my roof, you know, you beat fucking Daigo Saito, boom, 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 boom. It was so funny story. It was that's, so funny situation. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, that's a cool story. Uh, here's one from W Meyer Eleven. Would you rather yeah. drift a spicy meatball or a pizza pie? I would. I would go for a uh, meatball. Meatball man. What's is yeah. what's what's better? Is, is is Italian sausage popular out there in Italy, or is it a meatball? Really? In, in Italy, it's just known as sausage. Is it just sausage? Sausage. Uh, yeah. We got Italian meat. <laughs> we can go sh- when you come shopping here in the United States. You can buy Italiano spicy sausage. Mm, yeah. I will. I'm I'm looking forward for that. I, you have to take me around. Dude. Oh yeah, we'll we'll show you around. We'll take you, you'll, you'll you'll fit right in, man. Like you know, the sheriffs in town. Yeah, watch out. We, we we can go to Tombstone. And... The thing is, is you know, there's dress code at Formula Drift where you have to wear assless chaps and a vest if you're going to be the sheriff. So <laughs> uh, I I don't know if you know that. I know you're coming in as a European, but there's a couple no, rules. Man, you have to teach me these things. You know, I follow. <laughs> I follow whatever you tell me, man. You know. Uh, okay, I think I uh, okay. <laughs> Pixel Babe, this is uh, Big Balls Brian's wife. Oh. She's pitching in here and she is asking, does pineapple belong on a pizza? The answer is yes. Oh, wait, dude, you guys put pineapples on pizzas out there and it... Oh, God, of that's course. like a like, What do you expect? I d- do you guys use ranch dressing on pizzas? <laughs> <laughs> Am I breaking no, all I, the codes in pizza? What about... Hey guys, what yes, about... I cannot hit you anymore well. No, <laughs> it's no, breaking up. It's breaking up. How can you put a pineapple on a pizza? I know it's common there for you guys. What about buffalo chicken? I already went on this talking. No, we put no pineapple and... <laughs> buffalo uh, chicken. Yeah, I don't know. No buffalo chicken no, either? No, no. What do you... Okay, so if you were to... Or this is a question from uh, Larry Berry. <laughs> he wants to know, what would you put on a pizza if you ordered it right now? Um. Well... Mozzarella, mm. uh, tomato, and uh, prosciutto crudo. Oof. That's it. Oof. No meats? Yeah. 
No, that's, you're not, that's prosciutto. No, no the prosciutto, prosciutto is a ham, okay? It's, it's a like, raw, uh, raw, fresh ham. Yeah, delicious. It's a Parma, it's a Parma ham, you know, very, very fresh. Lightly okay. smoked. You can, you can put, yeah, there, there is the smoked one, is the pink one. Mm. Then there is uh, the non-smoked one, okay? Okay, I like and the pink we, meat. We call it uh, crudo. Prosciutto mm. crudo, prosciutto cotto. Prosciutto yep. crudo is uh, the raw, raw one, okay? And the cotto is the pinkish one, okay? Okay. So we make pizzas with uh, with this on and some salad and some um, Parmesan cheese, you know. And we're doing it all wrong. Cordy's lost. <laughs> we're doing it all wrong here, then, dude. I don't... We're we're totally. But I bet your burgers taste like shit out there. <laughs> yes, I, for sure, for sure, it's uncomparable yeah. to your stuff. We got one up on Italy. We got the yes, best absolutely. American burgers in the world. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I I agree with that. All right, so uh, when we come out to Italy to uh, drive some of the Skyline, mm -hmm. to drive uh, the GG. When he wants. We, serious, we're going we're to do, go. some, we're gonna do some pizza. Some well, we're hopefully, pizza. we're going to hope, hopefully go on a tour here soon where we go to Gottbill and where we head to Italy. It's awesome. Like next next door, on. right? Let's you do guys, this. You, you guys be my guest, really. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you, we'd man. Love to, we'd love to do something like that, but uh, we'll talk about that I, along the Appreciate it. Yeah, we, much appreciated. Uh, me too. Let's go. Let's go to the basic question. This is from uh, Terra uh, Terra Drift. What gives you the right? Oh, I read Oof. this one. What What does he mean by the right? Just the and you can make you can make it whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can say whatever you want. That's what it means. I mean, what gives him the right to make right. me a question that's like a great, that? That's a great point. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just it's it's kind of an, like an inside joke that uh, we. Paco, asked. now you just spoiled the inside well, joke. I mean, that's, it, yeah. You answered it correctly because there's no wrong way to answer that one. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. See, let, let me look for some questions on the on Facebook as well because there's a lot right here. Okay, here's one from uh, Monsters and Sam. Would you say a Ferrari is a good beginner drift car? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, yeah. I suggest to everybody to buy a Ferrari as the first <laughs> car to begin with. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, God, they would go through some weird fuel problems that spin backwards if they end up doing that uh da, 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 da. how much forza did you play decided on using a ferrari for a drift car and that was tuned by more m rogers m rogers um i haven't decided to use a drift a ferrari as a drift car through a video it's game the ferrari that decided me for her to be her driver he didn't chose a ferrari life the ferrari life shows him wow Dude, Federico, my God, a, you are just an animal tonight. Italian thug. Yep, I love it. You got <laughs> one or two more, Paco, and then we'll end Let's up wrapping see. it up. Um, oh, here, look, I got one right here. Jake Larson asked a good one. What was your first car? My first car ever? Yep. Yeah. A Fiat 126 Bis. It's like an old Fiat 500. Ooh. So it's a Fiat 126 Bis. It's a... Uh, it's a thing long, uh, two meters. Okay. Okay. It's a 650 CC and I broke it in a, uh, motocross circuit because <clears throat> my mom didn't buy me the motocross bike. So I went with my friend in, the car. in, in, yeah, yeah. In this <laughs> dirt track with the car. And then I did a jump and it just finished like that. That's it. The car. Uh, here's That's a question it. from Saganaki 44. Um, Hi. have you drifted What's Mugello? Some of this? Have you drifted Mugello? Mugello, no, no, never Mugello. I it's one uh, one track in, in Italy on the bucket list. I I've done almost everything. He spotted the only one track I haven't been to. Dude, there. that's a that's a bucket list here for myself too. Is Mugello? Yeah. I've watched that yeah. track, Formula One. It's amazing. So many. You guys, you guys should make it combine with the MotoGP. We go together to see MotoGP when you come in. Oh Italy. God, that there it is. It's, it's done. It, the trips. We're planned. travelers. I'd like to thank. All uh, right, dude. If we if we if we grab the the red eye right now, we could probably make it there by noon. I would rather grab. We can the, make it there on time for for uh, yeah. for espresso. No, I definitely rather Better grab. See? Paco, I'll grab the red eye. You grab the brown eye. And I'll meet you there in the morning. <laughs> I'll meet, I'll meet you there in the morning, all right? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I have a question from uh, Hot, Locks for, Hot Dogs for Legs 69, XX 69. Yeah. And uh, he says, uh, I see you are sitting on a driving simulator on the photo of Maximum Drift posted. So what's, what's up with you and, and drifting sims? Like, 
Are you an avid sim driver? Um, no, not not professionally. That's a Sparkle new simulator. So I was there in a uh, it was an event in a Torino, and I have a lot of passion on simulators and and uh, games and video games, and I think that we should develop a drifting serious simulator. Also because this would give the chance to some drivers to drive, try new tracks without crazy really real cost, you know. Right. Like real running cost. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Think about it. Yeah, I mean because you know, you can crash as many times as you want and you just push yeah, reset. Just press restart. Well, fortunately, we have a, our, our very own uh, Big Balls Brian, the, our guy behind the consoles. He's like a excellent, I would say, uh, sim okay. driver. So maybe we can ha we have and a match. Battle. We'd we love to do a live stream. Federico yeah. versus Brian Ico. Yep. Uh, USO. Is it on? <laughs> hey, so uh, as we're wrapping up here, Federico, what do you have planned for the day? What's going to be your day like before we let you go? Um, actually, I'm organizing and packing up all the stuff to send to USA. The container... Uh, it's coming next Wednesday, so wow. I'm packing as many things as possible, and yeah, getting getting organized because this uh, Sunday I have a drift matsuri. Okay, okay. I organize uh, drift matsuris and drift school, so I got students coming, customer coming. We're gonna do some grill and stuff, so I have to run all week, and yeah, for today. For, t for today, I mean, you made me wake up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and my day, my day is done. Yeah, <laughs> it's it. You know what? I mean, don't blame us. Blame the no, internet it's because it's the internet the one the, the ones who wanted to know more about you. Like we really don't. I mean, we all have Ferraris. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're we, so relatable. We actually, we, just... we actually don't give a shit about you, but we have to do this. <laughs> no, it's, cool. it's, it's our job. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> no, nah, just uh, yeah. kidding. No, I hey Frigo, we appreciate you getting up so early in the morning and uh, uh, being a part of this. My pleasure. My pleasure. Hey. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I had a great chat. Uh, I really enjoyed this, and I hope also your followers and uh, everybody uh, got to know me better and oh, man. Uh, some got some interesting infos. Oh, I'm sure. No, I'm it's uh, I, first of all, I just want to say I appreciate your story that you shared. I think a lot of uh, the misconception and thought about your program has definitely been cleared up. And even watching the chat, and we've had thousands of comments on all our platforms so far mentioning. Uh, that very unique on what you're doing and they appreciate your involvement and uh dude we're Thank just you. excited to see you in long beach and uh we'd love to have you back on and see you in italy and all that stuff but uh cool thanks dude yeah you're thanks, awesome. thanks for your time and um um thanks for your time and we keep in touch keep up the the cool work okay you guys are very cool thank awesome, you appreciate man. it hopefully it's not the it's not the last time we talk to you in this uh, season no and absolutely uh, See you in Long Beach, dude. Molto grazie, amico. Uh, uh, ciao, ciao ragazzi. Ciao, man. Molto grazie. Bo ciao. Bu buona notte. Buona notte. Grazie. Eh? Take care. Grazie. Buona notte. Bye bye. Adios. <laughs> wow. Corey, we just went to Italy and back. Man. Uh, all I did was brag about his cool cars. That's, I, I would, dude. If I have Ferraris, uh, pff, I'll be I, shitting on you. I can't believe you. how arrogant he came I'll, off. I'll be shitting I on Brian. Can't how, dude, he had so <laughs> many gold jewelries in the background that he had to show. Dude, next time I have, well, next time I'm gonna be on the show, I want to bring all my gold necklaces from 13 years old that uh, my old grandma Mimi got yeah. me. I'm gonna hang them up right I'm here. Wear, I'm wearing mine next episode. Yep, I'm gonna it. just be so golded out that you guys. Then are gonna he think was I have. all like, like my pizza is better than your pizza. We don't put ranch on your pieces <clears throat> of shit pizza. Okay, dude, well, like dude, you don't put ranch good. on pizza. Like wow. How, what, yeah. a, what a non-American, uh, dude! Good yeah, luck how making American it are you, yeah, Federico? I mean, that the that way, is you're not gonna make it on the American circuit. Yeah, uh, you need to understand the rules here. You know, it's all about the edible arrangements and the cheese. How it's much like, cheese and hot dogs? You got? It has to be. It has to be uh, just uh, American cheese. No yep. mozzarella. No fella bullshit. Yeah, give me no. some American or Colby Jack. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Do you like know what I mean? Singles. Yeah, give me craft singles. <laughs> craft singles. I'm gonna smash them cheese, right there on that burger. Cheese sticks, like string cheese. Dehydrated powder. Yeah, uh, give me the powdered mac and cheese. They don't. Do you have that in Italy? I don't think so. Back I, off, dude. We're innovators. We're yep. creators. God um, dang it! Unbelievable. Yep. Oh, dude, well. no, I know. And in all, in all seriousness. Um, Super surprised. He was a very dude. nice dude. Very Blown away. very ground very grounded. Uh, um, I think I think there's uh, there's gonna be a lot to learn from him because I think he definitely 
from from what he said, he's definitely going to be totally the opposite from what people is expecting from him. Like a lot of people think he's going to be like this Italian superstar. Do you remember Talladega Nights? Yeah. And with Will Ferrell and uh, what's his name? Um, Harry Berry, 44. Uh, no, the uh, <laughs> Sasha 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 Baron, Baron, yeah. Baron Cohen. Yeah, he was like the European driver right. getting to the American sport. Ricky Bobby, yeah, Ricky Bobby. the French driver. Yeah, he was French. Yeah. Paco, but, get your fun facts movies well, right, dude. Come on. I was about to say that. I, know, I mean, what I, I was I, saying I, is like you know, like he it, was it sponsored seemed, by Perrier. Oh, yeah. and, and he was drinking espresso while driving. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like it seems like that could be like the the way it could be perceived. And look at him; he's just a chill dude. It, you know, I thought he owned the car. And I thought like it was just inherited money, like as everybody thought, and you see it on the internet. Well, because all the time. it's it's hard to think that somebody will work on a program right. with, with hey, you know, we have this Ferrari, want you to drive it, right? You know, or that, here, we, here's a Ferrari, go develop it, yeah. And then he puts the team together, he puts the shop together, he obviously manages and stores cars at a shop. It's and you know, as soon as hearing that, it's like that dude is going to run a top tier program. Yeah, he raised the money and funding to go do it. Uh, he built the car. He developed the car, and you know a lot of people were asking, you know, why did he not run last year? And he gave an explanation earlier. If you're just coming into the episode, he was mentioning that he didn't feel the car was capable yet. And we see a lot of people make that mistake where they jump it's into a still, series and, the, and they break the car in. the first round. It's undeveloped. It's not. And so that first year that's supposed to be a cool breakout year yeah. is a year of hardships and cars breaking. And so I think he. May, I think he made an awesome choice on, you know, do you know what? We need some more time. And for him to say that, I think a lot of that Japanese training that he got has definitely played and shaped him into making a lot of these decisions because a, uh, a lot of his decisions in driving was influenced by Team Orange, and I think they, they trained him right. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked on that, dude. I think uh, that was probably one of my favorite calls yet because it was uh, one I didn't expect. I didn't expect it to go I, that way. I and agree. It, and it was one of those conversations when I first started. Puck was like, oh, yeah, we're talking to Farika. And I'm like, well, great. How is his English going to be? Because I didn't know if he was going to be like, it got very good. Uh, I got to drive good. Uh, Why are you making fun of Kristaps? <laughs> no, no, that's, that's not Kristaps. That's more of like, uh, uh, you know, most of the, like, the like, simple like, Europeaners that uh, in motorsports, you get them out here and they're like, yes, it's got a good. It's Ferrari, very good. It sound like uh, but the Iceman and F1. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kimi Raikkonen. That's a good example. <laughs> but, yes. But yes, very good. <laughs> was and I was good. like, okay, so we're going to get into an hour and a half long chat of, with yes and no questions. Yeah. What else can I ask them? Uh, we, we even got the, yeah, the grand you, tour of the shop and yeah, yeah. so I was, fired I was, off I was, his dude, car I was super us. pumped on that. And uh, yeah, his personality, yeah. I think he's going to be very successful in the sport. And the thing is, is even when he came out, he goes, dude, I, I'm going to try to perform well, but at the end of the day, I'm, I just want to learn. And I don't want to have fun and put on, and a show. put on a show. It's like if you enter the sport that way, you're not going to fail. You know what I mean? You're not going to fail because as long as you do those two things, you're going to win. And that's things that we've talked about in prior episodes. It's like as long as you step into the sport – and say, do you know what? We're just going to do what we can. And if that means we end up on top, cool. If it doesn't, at least we did the other two things on why we came here. So yeah. I think it's going to be awesome, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by that conversation. We're, we're so. only, what, month and a half away? We're almost like, what, 50 days, 60 days, somewhere around there? It's, it's, it's coming it's, up, it's man. It's coming. But do you know what? <laughs> you look at Matt Field, his, his engines got just put in not too long ago, and now they're just putting the body kit on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cars have been shook down, hasn't been tested. Uh, suspension's barely just put on, and he's like, Car's done. It's shaking down. While you guys were racing last year, I was developing the car. And now I'm shipping it next week to the United States. It's yeah. done, tested. So Thanks. he has a head start on still driving yeah. and develop. I'm sure we we'll want to see him at Willow and testing at a few other tracks. But he's he did it right, man. He's, yeah. he's done it good. I'm pumped. I think yep. I think he's gonna do good. He's got a good attitude. He's friendly. He's obviously not not afraid of 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 cracking jokes. I think that's a very important thing. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure I'm sure that the the fans are gonna love him. Yeah. It's awesome. So, uh, anyways, guys, I think we're we're wrapping it up. We just want to say thanks to all our Patreons. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. We're also potentially going to be doing a wheel giveaway with a Motegi wheel next. Motegi? Week. We're giving away a set of Motegi What's wheels. What's going next on, week. Corey? Tell us about uh, it. So we're we're working on some rules and regulations, but I think it may only be open to our Patreons. Okay. But uh, our Patreons are going to have access to a wheel giveaway. And the wheels that we'll be giving away from Motegi are the same wheels that I ran on the 350Z in Texas. It's a brand new set. They're the MR135s, and they're the black and bronze. Show to the camera. So let me see here. Let me see if I can pull this up. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. We're going to be doing a wheel giveaway, guys. See what happens. We get a bunch of cool people working with us. We get a bunch of cool stuff. Nice. 
The MR 135s will be able to give away, and we'll have all the rules next week. But uh, for now, go check out Motegi uh, on their Instagram. Um, go say hi to them. Say Maximum Driftcast sent us, and then we'll have the rules announced by next week. Also at Motegi Racing. Right? At Motegi Racing. Yep. And then obviously AM, dude. You guys, we have some crazy news about next year in Formula Drift. Are we allowed Drift to say Cast, it already? Nope, not going to say it yet. Huge news with Driftcast and AM next year at Formula Drift. It's going to change the sport in a good way because we're filling a void. And uh, we're, we're super pumped on it. My guess is that we're, are we bringing the hot dog stand we're to every round? We're doing a hot dog stand yes. every single round, and they're all AM. That's the void I wanted to yep. fill. But with, uh, with hot dogs. <laughs> we're doing something very special with AM and Formula Drift next year, and uh, it's something that the, next year, this year, this year. Sorry, yeah. I, mean, I'm, I don't know why I'm still stuck in 2017. <laughs> but uh, we're super excited about it. We'll have news about that soon. We also have a new partner coming on board, uh, which we'll talk about next week too. That's going to help us get to a lot more rounds and also for more giveaways. And then obviously we got to thank McLeod. Uh, McLeod Clutch is always being a large supporter. Support the the companies to support the series. Support the companies to support the show because they're the ones that keep us all on track. Go give so. him a follow, give him a like, and show him that you know that you guys listen to Maximum Driftcast and that you and like. we'll be able to give more stuff away. Yeah, exactly. So full set of wheels. They they are five by one fourteen point threes. Um, the offsets are uh, twenty five and fifteen. Twenty five uh, plus twenty five and plus fifteen. A 114.5 by 5. MR 135s. By off 17. Uh, offset 25 and 15. So they're 9 and a half. 18 by 9 and a half. So, so they're like the AKA gangster, gangster fit. You're going to be looking flawless, dude. You're going to be stunting hard. But, uh, anyways, guys, thank Before you for Before we tuning. go, yep. um, so we've got how many uh, content creators' uh, emails? Good point. Dude, oh, God. 95? Or more. Probably a, a close to 100. Right. So. We haven't responded to you guys yet because the, your response was overwhelming and it yep. was it was amazing. Like seriously, thank you. We're definitely gonna uh, start writing back to you guys. It's not gonna be like a mass email. We're yep. gonna try to individual talk individually go through certain emails yeah. and get you guys out there. But so, yes, thank you for bringing that up. We're getting back to you guys. Uh, we're just going through mass amount of emails. But um, anyways, guys, we look forward to talking to you guys next week. We'll chat with you guys on Instagram this week. But uh, then again. See you guys soon. Have a good night, and thanks for tuning in. And Audio Back to the United States. Ciao. Is that what they're saying? No, Ciao. That's not, see. Ciao.